Hello, welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? Welcome. Hello, Frifu. Hello, I could do. Hello, Mr. Botka, Evan Ho. Uh, he pot. He, he's left, unfortunately, but maybe he's gonna be back soon. Columbetka. Uh, I didn't see anyone else. J, J, J Vector VO. Uh, JTC Z Supinik. Hello, hello, Supinik. Hamikovi. Welcome, 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 welcome to a Friday stream. And you know what Friday means? That means today, according to the schedule, I pick a random topic and stream that topic for a single stream. That's what we do today. And the topic of today's stream is something that I needed to actually write for quite some time. So this is something that I actually need. Uh, I've been programming in a camel lately, off screen. Uh, and what I need is a parser combinator library but not just a parser combinator library but i need like a very lightweight one with the minimal dependencies preferably with none of the dependencies except the distribution of a camel so and i decided maybe that would be a pretty good topic to stream um today i already started developing it off screen and while i was developing i thought it sounds like something interesting so let's actually do that on the stream i'm gonna start from scratch by the way so you uh, can um, keep up if you want to course so yeah we're not going to use any batteries or or jane street core or anything at all we're going to use only the distribution of a camel so and the distribution of a camel is going to be enough to implement parser combinators and what is a parser combinator well if you don't know what is a parser combinator uh, what are you doing here okay so uh parser combinator uh white pepper so uh, i would really recommend you to uh, take a look at the white paper about magnetic uh, parser combinators so this is like a famous uh, paper that actually introduces this kind of concept. I, I only wish it uh, load up for me. Uh, yeah, magic parser combinators. Um, it's primarily, it's not really like a scientific paper. It's, it's more of a tutorial, right? So they made a tutorial in the form of a scientific paper, um, uh, which is quite uh, quite approachable if you program in Haskell. And I also would recommend you to check out my JSON uh, parsing video, where I actually reinventing monadic, uh, reinvented magic parser combinators in Haskell and parsed the JSON with them. 
So yeah, and this is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to implement this thing, but in a camel and it's going to be faster than in Haskell because a camel, first of all, is not a pure language. So if we need some sort of like uh, epic uh, imperative optimizations, we just can do them. So we can just <clears throat> like inline write imperative code if we want to. And on top of that, a camel is not lazy. So the performance is predictable, right? So uh, I believe it's actually quite easy to beat uh, uh, you know, parser communities uh, libraries in a camel just by using um, parser communities libraries in Haskell just by using a camel. So, and that's what we're going to try to do today. Maybe if we have enough time, uh, we maybe will measure performance of different libraries and compare it uh, with, with ours. Uh, which is quite approachable with a program in Haskell. Yeah, I, I do understand that it could be a problem. <laughs> hello, this is Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start a library from... God damn it! Chat is just monadic sub-combinators. Yes, they are. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lost Algorithm, for 11 months of tier 1 subscription. Almost a year. The year is coming. The year is coming. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, such a continued support and welcome to our epic monadic parser combinator club. Jesus fucking Christ! A Kurkozer, uh, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription, your first subscription, as far as I can tell, uh, and welcome to our uh, Monadic Parser Communities Club. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it, don't worry. Uh, so, um, what I was saying, yeah, yeah. so we're going to implement uh, this library today on the stream. So the first and important step of developing any library and ensuring that the library is popular is coming up with a name for such library. This is insanely important step. The second important step is coming up with a logo of the library. And only then we can think about implementation. So if you get name and logo incorrectly, you might as well not write a library at all because not, nobody's going to give a shit about it, right? So, um, <clears throat> so let's take a look. Uh, uh, one of the most... <laughs> thank you for your content. Well, and thank you for 16 months of tier one subscription. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for such a continuous support and welcome to our epic uh, Monadic Parsi Community Club. Yes, that's where we are today. Um, <clears throat> I followed the tutorial dot Thank you for interrupting the stream. Well, thank you so much for interrupting the stream. And thank you so much for 17 months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome to our Monadic Parser Community Club. Yeah, sub train. Something happened a month ago that everybody just started to subscribe. All of a sudden, I don't know why. Maybe I was in a good mood like a month ago. I don't know. But thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for the support. Uh, so yeah, one of the most popular uh, Parsec community library in Haskell is called Parsec, right? And uh, you can tell that the, its popularity com comes from its name. It's a very clever name if you think about it. Like it's a parser, com like parser combinators, and it's a parsec. It's a, like a measure unit of distance, like intergalactic measure unit of distance. It's, it's a very clever name. People liked it, uh, and uh, yeah. So we need to come up some, with something with something else. Uh, so uh, let me see, let me see. Um, so okay, so this is a parser uh, combinator per com. Yeah, you're right, a good, but there's nothing super interesting about that. How about parser combinator of Mon yeah, yeah, I think this is a little bit better. Parser Combinators of Monad. Parkum. Yes. Parkum. I think it's fucking perfect. All right, so, um, um, <laughs> any parkumers? Uh, parser uh, Combinators of Monad. Uh, and it's gonna be public. And uh, do I want to add a license? Is there is there any way to add a license? Oh, I can add, add a license. MIT, uh, git ignore, the template, Okumul, and uh, add readme. There will be a long description in your project, blah, 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 blah. I think we're good to go. Yep, cool. 
That's a good name. Thank you. Thank you so much, chat, for coming up with the, with the name. Uh, main, uh, I mean, it's, it's okay. I have nothing wrong, uh, and nothing against using main. So it's just whatever. Uh, bad starting is no, not November. I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of lost no, not November on November 1st when I add like ate a little bit of, um, almond. <laughs> so yeah, I already failed it. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so here's the library. Uh, a little bit later, we're going to come up with the, with the logo for this thing. Uh, and maybe I need to update my project command. So it's going to be update CMD project. Uh, today we are developing a super fast, lightweight, uh, in a camel called Parkum. Become Parkumer today. Uh, so check the source code uh, https github.com. So it's in Parkum. All right, become Parkum. <laughs> So um, <clears throat> uh, maybe it also makes sense uh, to uh, yeah to put that in the uh, in the title yeah so I'm gonna update the title uh, super quick so there we go all right so uh, what's gonna be the next step the next step is gonna be actually cloning this entire stuff and um, starting developing this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, parkour. Mm -hmm. um, I support this library is uh, I support this library because it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, e exactly. That's exactly why it's so fast. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm gonna create a SRC folder, and uh, I think I'm gonna also start Emacs. Uh, from within the development environment, but first we need to set up the development environment. There's such thing called OPAM. I, I'm not sure if I already showed that, but OPAM is essentially um, a package manager and also a compiler version manager. Parsi community library from scratch, very epic. Yes, it is. So, um, um, you know, Camel as well. So a Camel is a pretty, la a pretty epic language. Uh, I, I kind of like a camel a little bit more than Haskell. I also like programming in Haskell, but I like a camel a little bit more because it's a little bit more programmatic. programmatic. Uh, Poke camel, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm using a PAM, which is you can think of of an APAM like a combination of npm and nvm, right? In in JavaScript world, npm is a package manager and nvm is a well, like a node version manager. So uh, basically, in a camel world, we have a single tool for both of these things um, so and uh, it can manage several uh, uh, versions of the compiler and uh, for example if you want to set up the environment where a, a specific uh, version of a camel is available for you you have to do a pam en environment and it gives you like a bash script uh, that sets up uh, environment variables and stuff like that and you just essentially take it and uh, evaluate it um, in your environment. And there you go. If you take a look at the OCaml compiler, uh, it's uh, pointing to something that is installed in my home folder. So um, I, you don't really have to do that manually. You can just put that into your bash.rc. But I prefer to do that uh, manually just to stay aware of uh, how environment is set up and where the uh, executables come from. I'm not sure if it makes sense, but for some reason, it's really important for me. Otherwise, I forget how my system works. So for me, it's, it's really important to be aware of such small things. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't use a Rust app for setting up Rust uh, versions. I just like to install them myself because I always need to be aware of the environment. Otherwise, I forget how things work. It's, it's really weird. I'm sorry, but I'm a weird individual. Um, anyway, so uh, let's start Emacs. <clears throat> And let's create parkum.ml and there we go. Here is the fresh canvas, like a blank canvas where we can do anything, right? So, and this is where we're gonna start painting our beautiful, beautiful library. Uh, alias Nick Shell, yes, so basically, <laughs> I do remember that. ML is as in machine learning, no, ML is like in HTML, yes. Hello, Drokam87. <clears throat> and HTML stands for Hypertext Machine Learning. 
So, <clears throat> um, maybe we should actually put something in README, parser community uh, library. I think uh, I'm going to actually put whatever we have here. Super fast and let by parser commit in a camel. Uh, this is going to be the actual description. Uh, I'm not sure if it copy pasted it properly, so let me try to do that one more time. There we go. Um, <clears throat> no dependencies. Uh, no dependencies. Uh, you can just copy paste. Copy paste it to your project. Uh, project and use it. That's how lightweight I want it to be. <clears throat> right. So uh, no package managers, no, uh, you know, dependencies or anything like that. You just have a single file of the library. Just copy paste it in your project and just fucking use it. And you have parser combinators. Very fucking epic. So, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be the plan. Um, needs more buzzwords, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I think it's okay. To be fair. If you have any suggestions on more buzz buzzwords, you can submit a pull request, I suppose. Um, hello, Jiang. Welcome to the stream. So, did you clip that? <laughs> hello, hello. Um, uh, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, my, my git fucking broke. I don't understand why. Okay, let me just that Emacs. Let me just that Emacs. <clears throat> you need to add moments to the readme. Uh, super fast plus uh, library. Let's actually put Monadic, Monadic Parser Combinator Library. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I'm really glad that you liked it. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so add more details to the readme. To the readme. Let's push that right into the repo. Uh, hello, Fire Fixed. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Will there be a white paper? Uh, I don't really plan to write any white paper because there's already white paper on monadic parser combinators, so you can just read this one, uh, right? Um, let me just copy paste it. And also you can watch my video on JSON uh, parsing in Haskell, where I also reinvented monadic parser combinators. So yeah, I might as well actually add this thing to uh, references. Yeah, so we're gonna have a section of references. References and this is going to be one of them. There we go. Um, <clears throat> ref uh, add references to uh, readme. I'm going to push that right into the repo. Um, now, by the way, Jiang, I'm automatically using main uh, because I think, yeah, Git automatically just, you know forced me to use this branch and I'm actually okay with that to be fair like I don't really care about it too much so parkum uh, did I I think I didn't create a file I don't know how that happened but there we go parkum.ml so what is a parser combinator well let's think about what is a parser right it's a function that uh, uh, accepts some sort of input and returns something that it parses, right? You want to parse an integer, uh, right? Uh, so uh, you're going to have a function. By the way, there is such thing uh, called utop. It's kind of similar to GHCI for Haskell, but it's for a camel. And it's actually way more epic than GHCI because it has a lot of pretty colors and ASCII art and stuff like that. Uh, and it auto-completes uh, things, right? And you can also check stuff here. Uh, by the way, we're going to be mostly look at 25 out of 11. Okay, I believe in you, Jiang. You can do that. You can get all of the 11 of them and you will pass exam, uh, you know, with a straight ace. So I believe in you. Um, okay. So we're going to use utop um, for, um, you know, experimenting with the camel stuff and stuff like that. Um, okay, so for example, you have a function int of a string, and this is, this is a pretty straightforward function. It just takes a string, which is an input, and returns you uh, an integer, right? But again, so your parsing process may fail, right? Your parsing process may fail, and in case of an int of string, right? And so if you have something like 69, it will work correctly, but if you have something like uh, parkum, uh, it's gonna throw an exception. So in our case, we don't really want to throw exception. We want to kind of like um, fail a little bit more gracefully. So because of that, we're gonna return a result, right? So uh, we're gonna return a result, and result is a special type 
uh, in a camel, if I remember correctly. It's kind of similar to result in um, in uh, what is this called? What is this Zoomer language called? Rust. Yes, I forgot about the, the name of that Zoomer language. Uh, so uh, a camel result. Let's find out. Mm, I keep forgetting about Zoomer languages. I'm sorry. So it even looks like a you know a type from from a camel. So it has a version of a K, uh, which returns a value, and version of error. So and this is what we're going to be, be using here. So a parser is essentially a function from the input and a result that may either return what you expected. Uh, this is a by the way polymorphic parameter, or it may return an error. But that is not it actually. If you think about that. Um, what if you want to parse like a sequence of numbers, right? So um, you have like 10 numbers as a string, um, something like this, one, two, three, four, five. And you need a function that, you know, um, you have a function that parses only one number and you want to use that con uh, function continuously to parse all of these numbers. So that means um, this particular function should return not only the result, but also, um, um, but also the rest of the input. So essentially it uh, consumes a little bit of input, then returns you either an error or a result plus the rest of the input. So you can uh, then uh, reuse the same function to parse more and more and more. So as you can see, the more you uh, think about what is a function that parses an input, the more complex it becomes. Right, so it becomes more and more complex, you add more and more features into this, into this function, and it becomes kind of difficult to compose these functions together. Right, so for example, like how can I call this function continuously parsing numbers? Well, you'll have to constantly check for errors, you will have to constantly like uh, keep track of the rest of the input and so on and so forth. It's kind of... It's kind of frustrating, and this is where the parser combinators come, uh, come in. So essentially, um, they take this entire sy syntactic noise and shove it under a single abstraction. So now we're going to call this entire thing a parser. So, and this is going to be a structure, and we're going to keep this uh, function inside of this structure. There you go. So a parser is just something that wraps around this function. Right. So, um, and every time you come up with a new parser, we, uh, you will be able to compose them together with different operations that automatically resolve all of the problems, they automatically take care about errors, they automatically take care about uh, keeping track of the input, and so on and so forth. So this is basically what parser communities are. This is like the simplest definition of a parser community. Make sense? Um, probably makes sense. And for more information, you can also re read the paper or uh, watch my um, you know, JSON video and stuff like that. So, and we're gonna just uh, implement a bunch of operations for this particular <clears throat> for this particular type. So the thing here is that uh, we have two things that are not particularly defined. We have input and error. So um, we may try to say that input is just a string. Um, <clears throat> camel's like Haskell with cheese. Yeah, it it's kind of feels like it, but it's actually kind of great because uh, it makes it extremely pragmatic. Uh, because sometimes, like, it's kind of difficult and not practical to make everything pure. And uh, for some simple task, you just want to, like, write a couple of nested for loops. And a camel just allows you to do that. It's just, you know, you want to write, a, like, a nested for loop, just go ahead and write it. So no, nobody's going to notice that. So, and it fits perfectly into the whole, like, syntactical and semantical model of a camel. It's just fucking beautiful. I love it. Uh, you trick the mess. Well, yeah, maybe. Mm -mm. This is the most accurate the camel definition of red, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we have a command for void f, if you guys forgot. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so, but I don't really like this thing because I also want to keep track of the position of how much we parsed, right? Because uh, if the error happens, I want to know where exactly it happens, and if we stopped parsing, I, don't know, I want to know where exactly we stopped parsing. So basically, I want to uh, make an input a wrapper. So it's going to have a string as a text, but on top of that, it also have, it's going to have a position as an integer. Right. So, and if you're going to do any operations on an input, you have to keep track of this position, and then you can use this position to locate where exactly you are. Um, okay. 
So uh, let's also define an error uh, error type. So an error is going to have a description saying what exactly has happened and also position where exactly that happened. And there you go. So we have like two important things, uh, input and error and a parser that uses both of them. Um, so on top of that, I think it would be kind of cool to have a function that would let you make an input out of any string. So you would accept a string uh, and you will get an input so you don't have to like use a lot of syntactical noise just something like this uh, s and position is going to be initially i think you have to do like equal if i remember correctly and also have to do semicolon zero there we go so if you have a, a string you will be able to easily turn it into an input and then pipe it into the parser so something like that uh, all right so that's the two important things i want to have i suppose mm. should error position be int int for line and call uh, I don't think so. I think I want to actually uh, keep track of the position in absolute, uh, like in uh, in characters, because then later you can convert it to uh, lines and columns yourself, right? Maybe you don't want to uh, use line and lines and columns. Maybe you want to somehow address them differently. So we're going to uh, store the position universally. It's the character. And then we're going to have separate function that can uh, turn it into line column based on the input. Does it make sense? Um, so is the void of command a counter? Yes, it is a counter. <clears throat> mm, hello, should run. Welcome to the stream. So I think it would make sense to also have an example um, that uses this library um, somehow. Otherwise, it doesn't really make much sense. So we need to come up with something uh, that will parse um, things with this parser combinator library. So um, let me create something like examples. So in an examples, uh, let's create config parser, right? So it's going to be config ML. Uh, and we're going to try to parse um, a particular config format. So uh, test test conf so it's, it's gonna be very like a common config format uh, essentially it's gonna have comments uh, comments like this then it's gonna have a key value like this and comments uh, like this so this is gonna be comment two maybe one two um, then it's gonna have also empty lines and also it's gonna be like this value two yeah so, and then uh, three, four, there we go. Uh, so we need to implement like an example that uh, parses something like this using the, uh, uh, the parser communities library. So uh, how are we gonna do that? Um, so we're gonna define a config, right? Maybe we're gonna, uh, oh, it already has a word parser for it. That's really strange. Huh. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, so this thing is going to be uh, par, uh, parkum parser. It's kind of it's kind of strange. Like in parkum parser, it is not highlighted. Yeah, it is not highlighted because it's a type. Hmm. How about parsing dot ini? It shouldn't be uh, way harder than current format. We can try to do dot ini. Why not? Um, so. So this is going to be in new. Um, mm, 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 mm. So I don't really know what any is capable of. Does it have comments or anything like that? So we can have section one, key one to three. Uh, mm, section two, key one to three. Uh, does it have spaces between these things? We're gonna assume that it does have spaces, whatever. <clears throat> um, comments are starting... Okay, so that would be actually quite cool. Um, but maybe I do have an E. I don't have any mod, unfortunately. So, comment 1, and then we're gonna have like something like comment 2. Alright, so this is gonna be just a test to have something to test the library on. Uh, and instead of config, 
uh, instead of config. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have init.ml. It's gonna be init. Uh, it's gonna be parkum parser. Uh, and <clears throat> let's see how we're gonna do that. So right now it's not implemented, so it's gonna be just fail with um, fail with to do, right? Something like this. Um, unfortunately, I need to learn how to read the whole file in a camel. Mm. As far as I can remember, there is no uh, like a separate function that just reads the whole file in a camel, right? You have to implement it yourself. So uh, read whole file. Uh, you have to provide the file path. It's going to be a string, and it will return you like the whole string. So we're going to implement it a little bit later. All right. So uh, and we're going to run the test. So uh, we read. Maybe I'm going to do something like this in me. Um, what is it? it is a test in me. It is test in me. We then read the whole file. Then parkum read the whole file and uh, we make an input out of it. Right. We make an input out of it. Then we take an any parser combinator and we're running it on this entire thing. All right. And that should give us. Uh, the parsed result of a new, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but how are we gonna even do all of that? I think we need separate types for sections, so we're gonna have a section, and each individual section um, is essentially uh, a list, a list of pairs. So we're gonna have pair. Um, what's up, case it Hello, eighty-five. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And a pair is essentially um, key and value, right? Key and value. Uh, key is a string and value also a string. Not why cannot I cannot I tap pair? Yeah, there we go. So this is basically the whole model here. So uh, you have a section. Section is a list of pairs. Pair is a key value. Key is a string. Value is a string. All right. So and when we are making a parser combinator, by the way, I think I made a mistake. So as you can see. It uses polymorphic parameter, but I never actually parameterize this type here. So it actually has to be something like this. So that means you, what you will have to do in me is essentially um, a list of sections. So we have a section and list of it, and you have a parser that returns a list of sections. That's what it does. Right, it returns a list of sections. Um, cool. What's a parser combinator? You uh, can read a white paper about that. So it's uh, it's described here. And on top of that, you can watch my video about JSON parsing in Haskell, where I actually implemented monad implemented monadic parser combinators in Haskell from scratch. So yeah. So uh, to get into the topic, I would recommend these two things: this paper and uh, this video. So yeah. Essentially, parser combinators is like small parsers that are responsible for parsing small things, and then you can combine them to parse bigger things. Right. So, for example, you have a parser, uh, parser that parses numbers, and you can uh, have a parser that parses lists, and you can combine them together with special operators, and you can get a parser that parses a uh, list of integers. So yeah, you have like a lot of small parsers and you combine them making a bigger and bigger parser. So like Power Rangers, exactly. That's a pretty good analogy. Thank you, Jiang. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's what we're developing today in the camel. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, um, but this uh, just returns a result, so which is not enough, which is not enough. We will actually have to uh, test it out. So, as you can remember, probably, if you run a parser combinator, it returns the result, right? The result. It doesn't return you the, the way you write away. It just returns you the result. So the thing you have to do, you have to match it and see if it's successful or not. So you see, we read the whole file, we turn it into input, and then we pass it into the uh, parser combinator. And we get some sort of result. And now we need to find out whether it was successful or not. If it was successful, it returned OK. 
And as far as you know, in case of a K, uh, we're gonna have like the rest of the input somewhere here, which I don't really care about. And then we're gonna have sections somewhere here. And uh, we'll have to uh, print those sections um, to do print parsed sections. So in case of uh, some sort of an error, right, some sort of an error, we will get um, this error description thing, this error description thing. Uh, so I'm going to put it like that. And then we need to actually print that error somehow. So the question is going to be how. So I'm thinking <clears throat> maybe, um, yeah, maybe we can just print it like, like, like so. Uh, so it's going to be uh, printf, printf. Um, so could uh, error happened at D and then we can print the description of that error. So we know the position where exactly it happened, right? So we know exact position, so we put the position and we also have the exact description of what happened there. So it's not really description, it's just desk. So this is how we're going to print the error for now. So and um, <clears throat> Hello, Chromosome Drift. Welcome to the stream. If make section a pair of key pair list, you can have nested sections and have uh, sections as well. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, we're just testing uh, parsing library combinator, like a uh, parsing combinator library. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter in my opinion. So um, we just need something, whatever. <laughs> um, I might as well actually just use JSON or something else, XML. Don't, don't care. So it, this is the format is not the focus of what I'm doing right now. The, what uh, the library is the focus of what I'm doing. Library is more important. So and uh, what I need to do, I need to print all of that. Uh, so maybe I can just do print sections, um, and we'll just have to implement this um, uh, this function somehow. So print sections and uh, let print. Mm -hmm. uh, let print sections. What is a parser? Uh, you can Google it up. Check out uh, like parser. Mm. Parser is something that parses, right? Parsing syntax analysis or syntactic analysis is a process of analyzing string and symbols either in natural language, computer language, or data structure, conforming the rules of formal grammar. So this is a, a parser is a thing or an object that performs parsing, and parsing is this. So yeah, uh, hope that makes sense. Uh, print sections, and uh, we're gonna accept sections here, and uh, it's gonna be a list of the sections that we're parsing, of course. Uh, we're gonna do a fail, uh, fail with to do. Mm. <clears throat> so now we need to read the whole file, and this is where we're gonna start having um, a little bit of problems. Right. So we'll have to figure out how to do that. So, but before we do we do all of that, I think I need to uh, try to build everything. I need to try to build everything. Uh, all right, let's try to build any example. So any example depends on um, any ML, right? And it also depends on the library itself here. So yeah, so src parcum.ml, there we go. So, and uh, we'll have to use, um, We'll have to use a camel find, uh, a camel find to build all that. A camel, a camel find is like a package config, but for a camel. That's what it is. Not using CBT. Ah, CBT was just a shared post. I'm sorry. I mean, why would you want to use it? It's just, um, I just wanted to see how you can use topological sort in uh, in real world, and that's it. Um, So, okay, um, <clears throat> we're going to try to build natively. Mm -hmm. A camel find uh, a camel opt. So if I remember correctly, I have to do like packages or just a single package. I don't even need to link with any packages, I think, at this point. Uh, yeah. 
I can just do something like O, uh, in E, and then I can use these things to build all of that. I wonder if it's gonna work. Let's actually find out. Uh, let's actually quickly find out. And it didn't work for some reason, and I wonder why. Uh, unbound module parkoom. Ha. Huh. So, yeah, this is where we're gonna start having the problem. Like, I absolutely cannot comprehend or camel find because it just works differently depending on the combination of flags. You can use the same flags, you put them in a different combination, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, it's just, it's just so bizarre to me. Uh, Feng Chi, hello, Feng Chi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're doing uh, a camel. Um, all right. Example. I need example of a camel find. I need example of a camel find. Yeah. So show me how to use a camel find. Internet, show me how to use a camel find. So yeah, I was right. So OPT. And it should just work. It should just work. Um, but it doesn't. Mm. Compiling a camel is a real change. Exactly. You get it. You actually get it. Uh, maybe it has something to do... We can try to rename a parser to just T. Uh, and here. Um, maybe... Yeah, I think I know. I think I know what's the problem here. So, let me try something. Um, let me try something. We can... Uh, can I do a camel find? Right, and... Um, a camel opt. And with the help. What kind of parameters can I have there? Uh, can I have minus i? Okay, so I, I think I need to set up minus i appropriately. So it's gonna be minus i, you can search in src, and minus i, you can search in examples. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Um, I'm gonna sneeze, by the way. And I got it. Oh shit, that was a good one. Uh, um, so, we managed to build all of that. Um, so everything compiles. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everyone. Um, okay, so we have an example that compiles. Um, I think it's gonna crash, right? Um, so print sections is not implemented. Right, this one is any um, parser combinator is not implemented. And uh, eh, read whole file, read whole file is not implemented. Right, there we go. And if I try to run this engine, I think it will tell me that uh, any uh, parser commenter is not implemented. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Okay. Uh, but I think we're gonna start with uh, reading the whole uh, the whole file, so I think it's gonna be a very useful function. Uh, a camel read whole file. I, I remember that I saw some of the examples on the internet that I could just steal. And uh, yep, we can. Yeah, this is the example I saw. So essentially, you open a file uh, like a ch as a channel, uh, then you read. Uh, into a string of the size of the channel. You can actually take the size of the channel uh, and then you can really input string. So there's there's actually function input string and really input string, I think. Let's actually find out. Uh, so there's input string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really input string hmm really really yeah really really input string yeah fucking classic is it not i think it's a fucking classic all right so uh how are we gonna implement all of that um so we have to open input channel for this particular file path so here's our channel then we can take the size of this channel, right? So it's basically in channel length. 
uh, channel length. If you're opening a file, usually you can relatively easy get the whole size of the channel, and then you can really, uh, really read, really input string this entire thing. Right, we provide CH and we provide the size, and um, it's quite important to actually uh, first close uh, the open file, close that channel, and only then return uh, what you uh, what you read. But pretty much, this is pretty much it. Mm, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much the function that reads the whole file. Let's see if uh, all of that compiles. Let's see if all of that compiles. It seems to be compiling quite nicely. I wonder if I can test this function in my uh, in my repo. I'm not sure if I can, uh, because I think to load it up, uh, maybe I can just do use examples uh, in ML. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, you cannot just easily do that, unfortunately. So you'll have to load recursively this entire thing. And can you use recursively? Uh, yeah, you cannot. Okay, so uh, we compile this entire thing with the by uh, well, like uh, with the native code, but we need to compile it with a bytecode. <clears throat> it's professional PHP dev for two months. Nice. Well, how did you like it? Um, Uh, yep. Mm, yeah, I want to test it out. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to test it out. Uh, but to do that, I need to recompile this entire shit in a bytecode. So it's going to be very similar. Uh, it was just a, a Laravel and I knew Django, which is pretty similar. Oh, okay. Not so, so not bad. I see. That makes sense. All right, so it's gonna be a very similar build, but instead of this shit, we're gonna use a C. Right. So I might as well actually add a four new target that builds both of them, which is gonna be convenient. Just build, build both of them. And this one is, of course, uh, funny. Uh, Camel compiles the bytecode, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it basically, um, yeah, it can compile to its own bytecode, of its own virtual machine, or it can compile natively, both of them. So which one do you prefer? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna even show you. Uh, I'm gonna even show you. I think I already showed that at some point, but uh, yeah. So let me let me do like all. Oh shit! It actually was very bad because uh, I need to do something like init here and then bytes. Then I'm gonna recompile it one more time. So uh, yeah. So I just created like two files, and as you can see, the bytecode one is way smaller than uh, native one. This is the native one, and this is bytecode one. If we if we inspect the native one, it will tell us that it's an elf 64-bit executable, and it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't depend on much uh, except libc and stuff like that. Nothing special. But if we take a look at the any bytes, uh, it will tell us that it's a OCaml run script executable binary data, and this one is actually very interesting. It's literally a binary file except at the top it has a shebang for the interpreter of that bytecode so that's basically a camel compiled into its own bytecode <laughs> and uh, i especially like the absolute path here um, yes, it does have hot reloading and debugging, and that's why I'm compiling it with bytecode, so I can use uh, utop, uh, utop uh, to load uh, the module. So now I should be able to do something like uh, src uh, parkum. By the way, parkum is the name of the library of parser combinators, and I can just load it up, and I have this module here, um, uh, probably. I, I don't know where it is, but it's supposed to be somewhere here. Um, but yeah, some, th something went wrong. Kumerlib, yeah, exactly. Parse, uh, unbound module parkum. Something is weird going on, so it shouldn't be like that, but okay. Uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it should, it should actually work, but it doesn't for some reason. Mm, maybe we can try to build, like, remove everything here. 
and maybe also remove uh, ex uh, stuff that was generated by examples and whatnot. Uh, and I'm gonna only build init bytes. Maybe they interfere with each other. And if I restart this entire stuff, I'm gonna try to load src uh, parkum cmo uh, parkum and it still, still doesn't work. That's very really strange. Hmm. Maybe this is. No, everything seems to be okay. It's just. It used. It, it worked before. Uh, but it doesn't work anymore. Uh, the top load parkum cmo. Oh, now it works. I, is this because. Okay, so I can also now make input. If I have some sort of a string, I can pipe it into the make input and it will turn it into an input and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So uh, I can have dynamic reloading and whatnot, but if I need speed at any point, I can just compile it into the native code. So that's a cool uh, thing about it. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right, so, uh, and, and yeah, speaking of, uh, the reason why I was making all of that is because I wanted to test function that reads the whole file, right? So that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so it's going to be in the CMO, uh, reference to, uh, God damn it. And if I do rec and bound, they are in a different, yeah. They are in different folders. That means if I want to use utop, I need to set up its include folders. Does it even have any include folder? It does have. Okay, so I have to run utop as src examples and on this. Okay, so it probably has to be something like this then. Yeah, and then I should be able to load recursively a module uh, in the CMO. And it failed, but it also loaded as well. So it should be it should be able to do any uh, read the whole file, and it should be able to read uh, test test any right. I should be able to read test any and okay. So it, it didn't do anything because it still failed. I see. I see. So maybe this particular parser combinator shouldn't fail with exception because it kind of prevents us from loading it dynamically. So I have an idea. What if we do the following thing? Uh, what if we uh, create a function called fail, right, that accepts, uh, let's say, maybe just an error, right? It accepts an error and creates a parser that always fails and ignores uh, any input, right? So we can do something like this. So it's a function like this, and then uh, we ignore the input and we always return error with the user supplied error like that. So this is, you can just create a parser that always fails. And uh, we can use this here like this. So it's gonna be parkum fail and uh, the error is going to be the following so we'll have to also describe the error let's quickly do that so it's going to be description uh not implemented yet uh and it happened that happened at position zero whatever okay cool mm. so uh now we have that and this should not fail anymore hopefully uh let me quickly recompile everything i'm gonna quickly recompile everything and uh, I'm going to restart one more time. I'm going to load recursively everything and uh, no such file or directory. Ah, this is because it also tries to run this entire thing. Let me see. God damn it. I just want to test the function, man. Why? <laughs> Can it just test the function? Apparently I can note. So, but one of the things to do that would be probably just comment it out because it's executed like every time you load the module, then you can recompile it and then maybe we can try to reload it one more time. And yeah, I have to restart it. Uh, then reload one more time and then f fucking finally, but it, that doesn't work. You know what? Whatever. I, I just wanted to test this function like in a in a ripple, uh, and uh, just you know, fucking a camel being a bitch about it. Like it's just 
doesn't make it easier. Yeah, exactly. I need something like that, but for a camel. Yes. Um, I wonder if it's possible to have something like that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, you was writing int. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, in read whole file. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm an idiot, apparently. Um, so, can I have, like, examples test in me? Finally, it, finally, we managed to test the function that I wrote. Why it is so difficult, I have no idea. I have no idea why it is so fucking difficult. <laughs> ah! So, but it is fucking difficult, apparently. Anyways. Um, cool. <clears throat> so, uh, we have that, and also uh, we want to be able to print sections. So, um, I suppose we need a function that prints a single section. A single one, just it takes a section. Maybe a sec section, and just prints it. And essentially what we can do, we can take all of the sections here, sections, iterate them with print section. There we go, simple as that. How would you print a single section? Well, I just realized that the section is not a, a list of pairs. It's actually a title or the name. It also has the name. All right, so it has a name uh, and it also has pairs, right? So this is how it's gonna go. Uh, it has a name and it also has the pairs, right? So, how are we gonna print all of that? How are we gonna print all of that? That's a good, cool function. Unfortunately, you cannot easily just serialize types in a camel. Um, so you have to, you know, write printers yourself. Do you have a functional programming primer? I have no idea what the hell are you talking about? Thank you for asking the question. So, uh, okay, can I do that? Actually print any type. Uh, how do I print one pri uh, any type? Yeah. Mm. Okay. PPX deriving show. You may use PPX deriving show plugin for PPX deriving. So is that something that we can have actually? I can find a uh, list and uh, maybe deriving no it's a third party dependencies uh primary like a beginner guide no i don't have anything of them sorry you may want to check out my youtube channel or my haskell rank series but i'm not sure how beginner friendly they are uh okay so there's nothing for that so we have to do that uh, ourselves so that's what we'll have to do we'll have to define it like this and we're gonna have a name uh which is s and then we're gonna have pairs. Uh, which I'm not even sure a good idea in general, but we'll see, we'll see. Mm. I don't want to print them ex in exactly the same format because it's gonna be unclear if we parse it, manage to parse them or not. Mm. It's gonna be clear. Okay, so maybe I can do something like show sections, right? Show sections, and uh, we're gonna return string instead. So I will be able to do it. I will be able to map show a single section, and then we'll be able to concatenate all of that. So if we have like several sections, we can try to concatenate them, all of them. Uh, maybe concat with uh, this thing. And then maybe uh, wrap it around as print F with something like this. Uh, hello, Cozy White Bear. Welcome, welcome to the stream. All right. So uh, yeah, we're gonna actually go the show sections route, and because of that, uh, we're gonna do the following thing. We're gonna take the sections, we're gonna uh, show sections, and only then we're gonna just print and line thingy. We're gonna do print and line thingy. We'll see how it goes. All right, so uh, this is gonna be show section, All right? And if you're showing a section, you're showing it's a name and you're showing uh, the pairs. So it's gonna be like this, uh, sec name and also show pairs, show pairs. 
Mm, 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 mm. Show pairs, set pairs. There we go. So this is going to be our thing here. But I have to use s sprintf uh, so it returns a string. There we go. And then I have to implement show pairs. Uh, and it takes a list of pairs and returns a string. And it's essentially similar to share sections. Uh, list map show a single pair. Uh, concatenate. I feel like we can implement like a library for showing types and whatnot. That would be actually pretty cool. Um, our own one, maybe. Hello, JV Cut. Uh, welcome. Um, so, uh, printf, s printf. Cool. Uh, and uh, we need to implement the last one show pair. I looked at that link. Uh, I look at that link, it uses third-party dependencies, so it's a bloat, we're not gonna use it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I already said at the beginning of the stream, we're not using any overbloated shit. We only depend on the distribution of a camel, because all of this shit is fucking overbloated, they ruin the software industry, no, fuck that, we implemented everything ourselves, okay? So, uh, the next thing, so the pair is just that, uh, and it's gonna be printf as printf. It's gonna be S and S, and it's gonna be P. Um, wait a second, pair is actually like this, so I can do something like key value, uh, key value, there we go. Um, <clears throat> Bloat has been fucking banned. Bloat has been fucking banned. Cheers. Let's celebrate the ban of the plot. <clears throat> Alright, seems good. Um, I wonder if this shit even compiles. Like, the majority of the code here is just printing this thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, it doesn't even compile because, uh, yeah, it has to be like this. And show section C, several of them. There we go. Cool. Uh, yeah, everything seems to be compiling. So the only thing we need to implement here, right, in ini, is um, essentially... <clears throat> is essentially the parser combinator, right? So for now, maybe, um, I'm gonna do the following thing. I'm gonna remove the comments. I don't think uh, right now Im implementing comments is uh, easy. Uh, we're gonna try to implement. Uh, we're gonna imp try to implement only this syntax. Uh, all right. So everything seems to be compiling, and maybe I should accept this thing in the in the input, in the our command our uh, line arguments. We'll see about that. Uh, but for now, I should be able to do something like this. Uh, yeah. So, error happened at zero, not implemented yet, and I forgot a new line. So, yeah, parser combinator is not implemented. Error happened at uh, uh, zero, not implemented yet. So, uh, the most, the two most important uh, operations in uh, parser combinator are uh, map and bind. And we're going to implement them after uh, we commit everything. So uh, let me try to do something like git ignore uh, is going to be, we're also going to ignore. Oh. So there is a convention in a camel for different kinds of executable files. So they usually use dot byte and dot native maybe we should use the same uh the same convention um so this is automatically generated git ignores by the way for by a uh, by a github so i just said that i'm using the camel and this is what it generated so i think it sounds reasonable why not so i can just do native uh and this one is going to become native and this one is going to become byte right there we go 
and uh, we're gonna build all of them here. Native byte. Uh, let's remove all of these executables. And if I try to build this entire thing, uh, it builds all of them, and all of that is already automatically ignored for us. We don't have to even worry about it. Nice. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Okay, so what is this commit? Um, I'm gonna say uh, ready, set, go. There we go. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, and the source code is already available, by the way. Uh, so source code is already <clears throat> available, and you can check it out here. So I'm gonna push to uh, like push there as I actually implement things. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Twitch is so bad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, let's continue. As I already said, the most two important operations uh, of Parser Combinator are um, map and bind. So, yeah. Oh, hello, well then. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So, map and bind. Uh, so, map uh, is essentially uh, it takes a function. Parkour, yes. It's a parser combinator of monads. Yes, that's what it stands for, parkour. So, function from A to B, uh, and also a parser uh, that parses A, and it returns a parser that parses B. So, essentially, um, it applies this function to the internal value of parser. Uh, to be fair, uh, I'm not really sure how good of a name parser is. Sure, I mean, that's what it says in the repo itself. I mean, repo won't lie. Yeah, it's a parser combinator of monad. So, yeah, that's what it stands for. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, now, yeah, so what does parser mean on a camel? Parser keyword, it's like the keyword, I never heard of that keyword, maybe, maybe they already have something for that? Lexer and parser generators, ah, I see, is that what they use that for? Keyword, maybe that's what they use it for. How can I create a timer for an image to appear? Uh, you just create it, I suppose. Hmm, okay. So I'm gonna rename it to par for now. Mm, yeah, let's call it par. Okay, so uh, this thing is not implemented yet, or at least we can just use fail. Um, no, uh, wait, no, parser is not a preserved keyword as far as I know, it's just Emacs being Pepega. Yeah, probably. It's really weird. Um, maybe I sh in that case I should just not care about it. So one of the things I can try to do is just open it in Vim and see if in Vim it highlights it somehow. No, Vim doesn't really care either, like it just highlights, you know, parameterized types. Yeah, makes sense. It's just Emacs. All right, so we're gonna fail and uh, we're gonna have an error at position zero uh, and the description is gonna be uh, not implemented yet. yet. Uh, all right, parkum. Um, parkum map is not implemented yet and it's gonna be a to-do. All right, so what is a bind? Bind is an um, operation that accepts a function that takes A and returns a, a parser that parses B, right? So it's more of a monadic bind. And then it takes uh, a parser that uh, parses A and returns a parser that parses B. Uh, just like that. So, and we need these two uh, main operations and we're gonna use them to combine parsers together. That's a very important thing. We're gonna use them to combine parsers together. Uh, all right, so everything seems to be compiling and uh, yeah, let's try to implement all of that. Uh, I think we're gonna start with the map, all right? Map is a new parser. Uh, I want to make a cup of tea. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna quickly make a cup of tea. Blood has been banned except for Emacs. Yes, it is true. So, uh, unfortunately, I cannot have a kettle here. So, um, I'm gonna just quickly go to the kitchen and put up the kettle. It's gonna be like super quick. When will you use this in production? Um, I don't know. I'm probably gonna use it tomorrow, and uh, I'm probably gonna. Uh, I wanna I actually implement like IRC library with this. Hello, it was Step. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So uh, here we take a function uh, that accepts an input. Right. So we are constructing a new parser combinator. So uh, what we need to do, we need to map what's inside of this parser, right? So that means we uh, take this parser and run it on the input. What this thing does, it may fail. It returns the result because you see uh, the, um, the thing returns the result. So what we'll have to do here, we'll have to match it. We'll have to match it with either OK or uh, an error. So in case of a K, it will return the rest of the input and something that we have to map. In case of error, it will return an error and the only thing we can do here is just propagate it up. Uh, so afterwards, uh, we'll have to return OK input f of x. There we go. Mm, f of x. So and we managed to implement this thing. So now we have a map operation. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Isn't that epic? Isn't that epic? I think it's pretty goddamn epic. And it even compiles. It even compiles. It would be cool to actually test it out. Mm, 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 mm. For example, um, let me implement something like wrap that takes some sort of a value, right? And returns a parser combinator that ignores its input and always successfully returns that x. But we couldn't actually ignore that input. We'll have to actually thread it like this. So, and uh, that will probably help us to test things out. All right, let me start a, a new time, a new top. Uh, interesting project name choice. Well, I mean, uh, it just stands for Parser Combinator of Monad. So it's, yeah, it, it is what it is. Like the, the name actually represents what it is. Um, okay, utop i src and uh, we're gonna load parkum cmo. There we go, here's the parkum. And I can take and wrap, for example, 69. Uh, yeah, there we go. And that gives me a parser that always returns 69. So then I can do parkum map and I, take, I can take the value of this thing and increment it. Right. And that gives me a parser that will return, um, let's actually do it like that. So it's going to be 68 and then we increment it, it will return 69. So we can take this parser combinator and then we can have some sort of an input, right, input. Uh, that we have to turn into input, so we have to do make input, and then we're gonna pipe it into that parser combinator, and as you can see, it returned us 69. So everything seems to be working. This uh, operation is working. Uh, this operation is working. So let me quickly commit whatever we have. Uh, so might as well actually do something like this. So uh, I'm gonna do implement parkum uh, wrap, right? And then we're gonna implement parkum uh, map. There we go. Implement uh, parkum map. There we go. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. You can find the source code of uh, the repo here if you're interested. So now we need to implement bind. It's more of a monadic operation. Uh, shouldn't be that difficult to implement as well. 
So uh, we have an input. And what we do, we do the same thing. We run our original parser, our original parser on that input. And uh, then we match the result of all of that. It can be either OKEG or Pepega. Uh, right. So, and then we take the rest of the input. And what do we have to do here? Uh, so, in the case of a map, we have to do like that. But since f already returns exactly the parser that we need to return, you see, uh, we have to just do f of x. But in this context, it, we shouldn't return actually a parser. We have to run it on the next input. So this is what we have to do here. In case of an error, we cannot really do anything. We'll have to propagate that error further, something like this. And uh, there you go. So we implemented like a monadic bind of some sort. So, and, uh, yep, it seems to be compiling, it seems to be compiling. Mm -hmm. Implement, uh, implement parkum bind, and we're going to push that right into the repo. Google says that parkum is not a valid scramble word, also, it's a TikTok use. <laughs> God damn it. I wanted to create a TikTok account for my library. Now I cannot do that. Oh, by the way, I think uh, I think the kettle is already done. You may probably think that this is a mug. It is not. It's actually French press. So. I want to make a joke about implementing parkum, but I think that this time sodium would time out. <sighs> so, uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, now, we, we can actually combine uh, parser combinators and modify what they return, right? And uh, I think now the time has come to implement something actually useful. Something actually useful. Uh, the most uh, useful thing, usually, the first uh, and most important parser that we usually need is something like prefix, right? So, and it accepts this prefix uh, as a parameter. So essentially, if you have something like hello world and you want to parse this hello, right, um, you want a parser that will uh, sort of split this thing um, like this. So this is going to be your parsed prefix and this is going to be your rest of the input. And this is exactly what the same thing implements. It implements the parser that parses the prefix, the very specific sequence of characters. Right, so and this is what we need to implement here. And uh, the result of this thing is going to be a parser that returns a string, pretty much. A parser that returns a string. Um, Parkum is 404. Maybe it was banned, by the way. Just like TikTok itself. Ah! <clears throat> Imagine being banned on TikTok and then TikTok being banned. Are you double banned in that case? It's kind of it's kind of interesting if you think about it. Uh, all right. So uh, yes. <laughs> uh, cool. <clears throat> the ban cancel out. Ah, I see. So after. TikTok being banned, that means you can use TikTok. I see. Makes sense. Um, so, yeah, what we need to do here, we, we have a string, right? Right, and we have a prefix. And we need to extract that prefix out of that string. So to do that, uh, we have a function uh, sub, right? So this function uh, text takes uh, a particular string and the range uh, and returns you a substring. So as you can see, you put a hello world here and you got a hello. 
um, and this is exactly what we're going to use to quickly parse the prefixes. So we know the size of the prefix, right? So it's going to be n uh, string length uh, string length s. But the talk itself is banned, so you can't use it anymore. Yeah, it's kind of a paradox. Uh, <clears throat> so I think my T is almost ready. So, and we are about to do a little bit of uh, TSMR. I guess ready? I guess ready for a little bit of a TSMR. I'm not sure how well it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try on this. Uh, like, I already tried it on my other microphone, but this one I'm not sure. Um, so, I have to adjust your sieve. So everything is uh, properly prepared. I think it worked. I think it worked. Yes, 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 yes. Just a second. Um. I couldn't. Par couldn't. Ah. <clears throat> Sorry. That's a good noise. Yeah. Uh, why parse committers on a camel and not C++? But because C++ is dead. Nobody uses this language in industry anymore. It's all about the camel these days. Vasily Popkin. Did you know that? Did you know that? You didn't know that? Are you out of the loop? Cheers, by the way. What's up, Thresh5? Welcome to the stream. Have you exercised today? Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's continue. I want to pass the in a camel is like a very bad idea. Yes. I mean, in C++. In C++ as well. So... <laughs> um, um, okay, essentially, uh, we have an input. And what we need to do, we need to do like a um, string sub on the input from 0 to n. Um, um, from zero to n, but the problem is that input is not a string. Input is not a string. If you take a, I think I did a fucky wacky, but that's okay. Excuse me. Ah, that's a very strange team. Parsing in a language that is not primarily functional sounds like hell. Yes, it is. That's exactly why we're doing that. So, as you can see, input is uh, not a string. So, um, but we still need to operate on an input and we still need to keep track of the positions. So, uh, because of that, I'm gonna implement a wrapper. So, we're gonna implement something like input sub, which is gonna have a, a very similar signature. It, it uh, accepts the input, it accepts the start as an integer, it accepts the length as an integer, and it will return you a new input, and it will update the uh, positions accordingly. Um, it will update the position currently. Input is a variable and type at the same type. W time. Well, we can fix that if it causes any problems. Um, so, all right. So what we do here, we take uh, string sub input text. Uh, we put a start and length here and we'll have to construct an absolutely new input. So text is going to be this. Uh, and the position is gonna be the previous position plus the start. So that's gonna be like this. Uh, yep, and uh, that's how it's gonna work. Mm. <sighs> Funny thing that I implemented my own parsing community library twice for parsing ASN.1 and for parsing ASN files oh my god uh, send dot one is a such a fucking hell yeah um yeah damn it um you're here what can i say um <clears throat> so now so now we just need to test how this particular function works. Uh, I wonder if it's going to work properly. So I'm going to comment it out for like a while. I'm going to comment it uh, out. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, so this is how it has to go. And it seems to be working. It seems to be working. 
so if I try to load parkoom, uh, yeah, and I'm gonna do something like hello world, then parkoom uh, make input. I turn it into an input. There we go. And then I can do something like a par uh, parkoom uh, uh, input sub input input sub. And you cannot do that because input sub accept string first it doesn't okay so we have an opportunity to fix that stupid fucking mistakes man yes finally uh, we have a control over the signature and we can uh, fix finally fix that stupid signature um what is that i don't know what it is um cool so let me uh, recompile everything <clears throat> and uh, let me reload everything. Mm. All right, and then I can do something like parkum sub, uh, input sub, excuse me, input sub, uh, and it's gonna be zero five. And there we go. So we managed to take a substring and it also keeps track of the position, but in, in that case, position is still gonna be zero, but we can try to do something like this. So it's gonna be four and uh, it still keeps track of the position, still says it's four and O should be at the fourth position. Zero, one, two, three, four, and it is at the fourth position. So it actually works. Actually behaves exactly as I want it to behave. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, now, instead of using this kind of thing, I can do something like input, uh, input sub, and it's going to be 0 to n, right? So, and that will give us the, uh, the prefix, right? That will give us the prefix. And uh, we'll have to be a little bit uh, careful. So, now, if... Um, the prefix is equal to the expected prefix, that means everything went okay, right? So I'm gonna do something like fail with uh, okay. So this is the successful branch. If it uh, didn't okay, we're supposed to return an error. So what's gonna be the, an error? Let's see. So an error is also gonna have a position. The position is gonna be uh, the start position of the input and the uh, description of that error is going to be uh, printf as printf um, expected uh, this thing and we're going to explain what we expected we expected this uh, suffix there we go so if the prefix is something that we didn't expect we throw this kind of error Hello, good question. Uh, will you implement AP for applicative as well? Yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, we're definitely gonna do that. Um, <clears throat> now, so what about OKEG? Uh, what about OKEG? Uh, in case of an OKEG, uh, we have to return this, but we also have to prepare the rest of the input. So uh, rest of the input is gonna be essentially uh, input sub input sub from n and the size of the whole input minus n i think so um what is the size of the whole input this is a good question so it's is something going to be like a string length uh, input text, right, it's going to be input text, and I'll have to do something like m minus n, um, and that's going to be the rest of the input, and then I can say, okay, uh, rest um, prefix text, or maybe just s. So that should be the way to go. Why not have a suffix function too? Because I haven't finished implemented prefix function yet. Um, all right. So on top of that, a sub function um, can throw an exception. Uh, right. So if we have something like 100 here, zero, it will throw exception invalid argument. So we have to be very careful about that. Why is your code not finished? Zozin, why is your code not finished? Re, re, your code is not finished. Re. Okay, uh, with uh, invalid, um, 
what is it? Invalid argument. Invalid argument. And uh, in that case, we also have to return error. Something like this. I wonder if we can prepare that error somehow. Um, so this is... This formatting is absolutely fucking pepega, not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I think we can... I think we, we can prepare this error. Unexpected prefix error, right? And it's gonna be equal to, uh, to this thing. It's gonna be equal to this thing and it's gonna be like that. So also maybe I'm gonna do it like that. Uh, and now I just return unexpected prefix error and here I just return unexpected prefix error. Like every time we have this kind of problem. Bit collage, welcome. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so I really want to have. Maybe I can call it prefix uh, prefix str, right? Prefix str, right? Prefix str, and this is prefix input. Prefix input, input, input sub, then uh, prefix input. If prefix input text equal to prefix str, uh, we just do that. So this one is going to be prefix size. Uh, this is a prefix str. This is a um, this is an input size. This is an input size. Uh, prefix size. All right, looks good to me. Mm -hmm. So this is a prefix size. Uh, chat, tell me, what is your prefix size? Sorry. <laughs> Please don't ban me. Uh, and then uh, this one is going to be prefix str. There we go. So a little bit uh, more... Describeful? I don't know why I want to say that. Descriptive, yes, I forgot the word. I forgot uh, the word descriptive. This is a little bit more descriptive. Uh, okay, so, yep, I think this is a good one and probably not gonna compile. I was right. So, because this is a prefix str, that's what it is. And this is not rest. Uh, so, this has a type. Okay. Ah, I see, because this has to be an input like that. I might as well actually put it like this. So it's going to be input like this. Uh, come on. Come on, man. Uh, all right. E yep, looks good to me. Looks good to me. Mm, I might as well actually... I really don't like how it looks. I think I'm going to go the other way around. So it's going to be error. Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so in case of that, it's okay, and in case of that, it's error, and it's actually pretty, pretty cool. All right, uh, and it even compiles. Would you look at that? It even compiles. So uh, let me see what we can do about that. So imagine uh, that we have a, a simple, very simple string, uh, which is called hello world, right? It's just hello world, nothing special. We turn... Uh, we turn that thing, well, one more time, hello world, hello world. We turn it into an input because our parser is capable of working only with the inputs. So make input. So here is an input. And then we pipe it into a parkum prefix hello, prefix hello, uh, and yeah, and run it. And what happened is an error expected hello okay i remember this one this is because i compare strings incorrectly i'm not supposed to compare them with equals equals i supposed to compare them with string, a string equal i remember this one this is very annoying uh, a camel thing but you get used to that after some time so uh yeah all right so what we got the input was hello world and the result of the parsing is hello with the rest of the input world and we're at position five as you can see it actually keeps track of all of that it, it keeps track of all of that we can try to do something like test and it will fail it will tell us accepted test at position zero you see 
expected test at position zero. So this parser community works perfectly. It works absolutely perfectly. Hmm. Um, alrighty, so um, <clears throat> let's actually commit that. Let's actually commit that. Um, mm -hmm. Implement a parkum. Um, what was that? A prefix parser. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that a parser community in a camel or in a rust? Oh shit, that's a nice one. I approve. I approve. All right. Mm. So what's going to be the next one? Um, I think we need ways to combine things together. Right, we definitely need uh, ways to combine things together. Um, so I'm going to uh, implement my own operators. So the most important operators that I usually use in parser combinators are uh, these ones. So, um, so this one takes two parser combinators. Um, the one that uh, returns A, the second one that returns B, right? Right. It combines them together. It executes them in sequence, right? But ignores the value of the left one. So you see, you can even see direction. So it ignores the value of the left one. So the result is going to be uh, B in this case, right? Fail with uh, to do. Uh, so another one is going to be like very similar. But instead, it's going to ignore the value of the right one. So it's going to return you A. And another one is the one that actually uh, preserves the value of both of them. And it will return us uh, a tuple of left and right. So we need to implement uh, these two uh, parser combinators. And uh, with them, we will be able to actually chain several parsers. And for example, chain uh, parsing of several words. Mm. By the way, I think I would not implement more sophisticated parser combinators because uh, they have more like type parameters and stuff, which my parser combinators don't really have. Um, so let me take a look. You also per you probably also parameterize some of the like monads that can be wrapped there. Uh, yeah, so you, you try to implement like a, as like as flexible of a parser as possible. Um, so I'm not very sure if we're gonna go that route. I'm gonna implement like a very specific, like very small parser community library. I'm not gonna try to make it as uh, flexible. Flexible, very funny. Well, I mean, it's as flexible as Rust allows you it, uh, to be. I don't know. <laughs> This is absolute disaster. Yeah, I think maybe Rust is not really designed for this kind of stuff. Um, all right, so let's implement all of that. So essentially what we need to do, we need to chain these two parsers together and throw away the left value of the parser. It's as simple as that, nothing special. Um, so let me try. So we're creating a new parser uh, that takes an input. Right? And then we uh, feed that input into the first parser, right? And then we're checking whether that succeeded or not. Oh, congratulations, Jian. Congratulations. You're getting closer to closer and closer to 11. Nice. Uh, all right, so this is a keg, and a keg can return the next input and uh, the value that we need to throw away. So essentially, I can just do underscore here and forget about it, and just take the second parser and run that parser on the input, and there you go. I pretty, I pretty much implemented it. So except I also need to uh, um, check the error case, and in case of an error, I just return the error. Nothing special. There we go. That's the entire implementation of this operation. You just chain two parsers together, and you throw away the value of the left one. Super simple. Um, let's let's see. 
Let's see, let's see. For example, why would you even need something like that? Uh, imagine that you have an input like space and some word. And you want to uh, parse that word, ignoring that specific space. Well, uh, you can easily do that. So let's uh, turn it into um, an input. So make input. And then we're going to pipe all of that in a very interesting parser commit. It's going to be parkum. Uh, you know what? Let's do open parkum. And that will import all of the symbols from that module into our current scope so we don't have to prefix anything. So I can do something like uh, space word and then I can do something like make input and then I, I can pipe it into a parser combinator and uh, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have prefix uh, space so it will parse this specific space and I'm gonna have prefix word and then I'm gonna say ignore the left one, chain them together but ignores the left one and return me the value of the right one. And this is what's going to happen uh, if you, you know, press enter correctly. Uh, and also don't forget to put a double semicolon. Uh, it will say reference to undefined global uh, parkum. Thank you very much. I'm super fucking happy. <sighs> okay, so uh, A, B, I, D, B. No, 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 no. Uh, this operator, by the way, this, um, uh, you can see that. This operator, in our case specifically, actually takes two parsers. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, it takes two parsers. Uh, yeah. So an ID is not really a parser. This ID is not really a parser. It's kind of complicated. In uh, in originally in Haskell, um, this operator works. Um, it takes a function inside of the left parser and applies it to the value inside of the right parser. That's what it does. And the reason why they did it like that so you can do the following thing, right? You can have parser one, uh, parser two parser 3 and so on and so forth and I didn't want to go that route uh, because that means I'll need to implement like a functor and applicative interfaces and that's kind of tedious like it's a lot of like additional code so what I decided is that I'm gonna make a close approximation and I make this operation just chain two parsers in sequence and return both of the values what's funny is that if you're gonna chain several of them uh, you're gonna end up with um, with a tuple of uh, results that look like this, right? Right, and the more parsers you chain in our library, the more like nested tuples you're gonna get. Does it make sense? Uh, so it's basically, uh, I was trying to emulate what we have in Haskell, but it's like a close approximation to what we have in Haskell, because in case of a Haskell, you would just put a function here that accepts four arguments and you won't have like a nested things here. Right, so it's sort of like a compromise that they, that they have to make. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> How does Haskell flatten it? Um, okay, so Haskell flatten it the following way. If you take a look at the... Um, we need to wait a little bit because uh, potato, my potato. Uh, all right, so we take a look at the operation in Haskell. It's a very interesting one. It takes an applicative with a function on the left and applicative with a value on the right. So if you have something like uh, this, you have like two applicative. Let's pretend that these two applicative are parsers, uh, right? And to flatten it out, you have to apply uh, like function like this, right? So if you have more values here, just seven, what you'll have to do on the right is to have a function of three arguments and just sum them up like that, right? Like every time uh, you add a new uh, container here, you have to increase the arity of the function on the left. So this won't compile because you have to have four arguments here now. That's how it works in Haskell. And I didn't want to implement it like that in uh, OCaml because that means I'll have to implement abstract interface and I just made it a close approximation. 
Makes sense. Uh, and have IO. Thank you for the rate. Mm, yeah. So, uh, okay. So I think I forgot to reload the thing. I think I forgot to reload the thing. Uh, and if I now try to open Parkum uh, and try to do this world. Okay, it worked now. It worked now. So essentially we have space word and the result of the parsing was just word without the space because we have two parsers that parses space and uh, uh, we have a, a parser that parses word and we actually combine them together by ignoring the left one. Thank you JetBrains, very cool. What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that word means, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, yeah, this parser combinator works, by the way, right? So you can combine them together and ignore uh, some of them. So we, we can even have some like hello world, right? Hello world. And we can have two combinators. First one, hello, and the second one, world. And that one will always return world if I actually do something like this, world. So now we need to implement the opposite uh, operation that uh, combines the parsers sequentially and uh, throws away the value of the right one. Uh, let's see how we can implement that. Fun input. Uh, right, so we take the first parser, we feed the input into that parser, and then if everything's okay, everything's okay, we take uh, this input. Uh, is an invalid word and suggest that it is a uh, unglanced version with oh I see interesting but what that what does uh, that word mean I don't really know what that means I can put that into into the Google Translate and maybe Google Translate will tell me what that word means uh, it's French to be d'être hmm. cool out oh, nine exposed being french yet again so here we have the value that we should not throw away by the way so this is the left value and then uh, we have to run the rest of the input the rest of the input on the uh, on the second parser but since we have to throw away the result of this one we have to use our mapping, right? We have to map this entire thing, ignoring what's inside of that parser, and we have to replace its value with the value returned by the right parser. This, how, this is how we do that. And this is where like map operations come in place. And of course, in the, in the, in the case of an error, we just have to you know, do something like this. Oh, and by the way, I think I can actually collapse all of these matches by using map operation for results, if I remember correctly. Uh, so let's actually take a look, because I think um, this thing is mappable. Uh, val map. Uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can actually map results. Uh, you can also map errors uh, of the results. Mm, errors of the results. Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, but we're gonna do that a little bit later. Mm, the first part of uh, applicative parameter has always confused me. The how would you have a parser parameterized by a function? When would you have one? Why would you have one? It's actually kind of easy. Imagine that you have a parser with a value, with a single value, right? And you use applicative operator and you apply a function of two arguments. So plus is a function of two arguments, right? So we can agree on that. Plus is a function of two arguments. So you apply pl a plus to it and you end up with a, a container with a function inside of it. That's how we do that. So you can get a function inside of a container by partial application through a functor penetration. Make sense? Yeah, this one is tricky, but uh, once you understand why it is like that, it's, yeah, it's basically through a partial application uh, inside of the, the functor. Uh, glass of Ethan, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
All right. Cool. Now, let me... Oh, by the way, this is a const. This is straight up const. So, uh, if I had const, I could have just uh, done something like const. And I think I should be able to do that if I take a look at the standard library of uh, Kekamel. Uh, of Kekamel. I think it has a module for functional shit. Yes, I do remember that. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. Basically, you have to do something like fun const. There we go. Const versus ID. So, they're... They're not comparable. They're different operations. Like, it's like multiplication versus sum. It's two different things. Like, how, how we can compare them like that. Um, so... <clears throat> All right, let's actually see mm, if it does compile. Oh shit, it doesn't work. Mm. Oh. So this thing returns a parser. No, it's, it's return, it returns a result. Yeah, so that means we'll have to do something like result map, I see. Is it, does it work? I can't fucking damn it. Oh shit. All right. Well, it should work, I suppose. So you have map, like you have a run, you run it on an input and you get the result. And you map it with this value. Uh, what are these prime characters? It's the same as in math. Uh, have you noticed? Um, that in math you can have x, you can have x prime or prime prime. It's the same thing. They don't really mean anything. Mm. The result expression has type error. Ah, yeah. Result input. Yes. So we have to be a little bit careful with this kind of stuff. Okay, so we cannot easily do that because, yeah, you'll have to do input uh, this and you'll have to replace it like this. Uh, input X, I think that will work and it does in fact work. Would you look at that? Oh my God. Uh, so let's actually reload that. Load uh, parkum and let's open this shite. And now let's take a look at this example. Okay, so I have a hello world string and I'm parsing it with this uh, combination of uh, parser communities. Hello world, but I'm throwing away the left one. So the result is world. If I change the direction, if I change the direction of this thing, uh, the result is gonna be hello. So you see, if I go to the right, I get world. If I go to the left, I get hello. So these two operators work. These two operators works perfectly. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, I think I should be able to compress some of these things, as I already mentioned, uh, because uh, I can just do like this. I can take the result of this and just map it as result map, not to rust result map. And uh, here we have uh, input prime nothing that we're going to ignore. And then we just run it like that. But this one... Oh shit, so that means we have to actually... Yeah. We have to bind it and afterwards we have to actually join it. I think something like this would work. I think something like this would work. Yeah, it does work. Because bind, it does have a bind, but it has a very inconvenient order of the, uh, of the arguments. I don't really like it. Uh, I don't really like it. Uh, but what about this one? Maybe this one could be also simplified. So p1 run. I can even make it more epic. Look at that. Just more pipes. You pipe input into the parser, then you map it like that, and then you join it. Absolutely epic. So I really like long, long pipes. It's so doing goes. All right. So in here, I'm gonna do a result map. Uh, then input prime x, and this is where we're going to put this entire thing. 
video this is pre-recorded who said that this is pre-recorded oh yeah th this is pre-recorded by the way yes the entire stream is pre-recorded uh, yeah I haven't streamed live for uh, quite some time already like I just run you know uh, reruns um okay mm. So and after that I should be able to do a result join result result uh, and it doesn't it's not JSON join Jesus Christ what the fuck is wrong with my fingers uh, look at those pipes look at those pipes oh my god they're so beautiful the most beautiful pipes I've ever seen in my life I love pipes um, this video is a yes it is true uh, cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I also want to test that. Can I load? Okay, it disagrees. Can I load one more time? Can I open it? And uh, let's go to hello world. Yeah. So this is hello. If I change the direction, it's world. Hello and world. Everything is okie dokie and karaoke. Sergeant, you really should be a plumber. Yes, a modded plumber. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so now let's implement the operation that actually preserves the values of both of the uh, both of the parsers. Uh, so this is going to be an input. We're going to pipe an input into a first parser. So it's going to be one run. And inside of that, we're going to do result map. Uh, so this is the rest of the input and the value that we need to preserve. So it's going to be input that. Uh, then we pipe it into the second parser and we map it like so. Uh -huh. So, but then we get the second value. And what we have to do here, we have to uh, combine left and right value into the uh, tuple, right? We combine them into the tuple and then we join the whole result, right? And this is how we get an operation that preserves both the results of both of the parsers and then you can map over it to uh you know do something with these arguments and whatnot uh yep um, all right let's try to recompile that and everything seems to be okie dokie karaoke if i load it up and then if i open parkum and then let's take a look at hello Right, so let's actually use this new operator that uh, preserves both of the values and let's see what's going to happen it returned us a pair Hello world. Isn't that epic? I think it's kind of, uh, pretty kind of epic. So now imagine that we have uh, something like hello world foo bar. Uh, foo bar. And let's actually chain more parser combinators like that. So it's going to be a prefix foo, then a prefix bar. And let's see what's, uh, what kind of result we'll get. We'll get nested tuples like this, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of close to like a list or something. If you think about it, <laughs> it's kind of close to list. Uh, but yeah, then you could probably map it and just do something about it. But yeah, he hurts and plots is back. Two back, champion of the arena. All right, cool. So we have a pretty, uh, pretty epic op uh, operations that we probably can use for all this stuff and uh yep 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 mm. implement <clears throat> implement what implement uh sequence uh sequence combinators for parkum parsers this is not how i spell sequence by the way sequence there we go push that right in the repo mm -hmm. and you can find the source code of uh, what I'm doing right now here if you want to of course if you want to uh... mm -hmm. so I think on top of the prefix uh, we actually have already pretty much like sufficient amount of combinators you can map and bind and you can sequentially combine the, all of them um, the only thing we need actually is alternative 
right so essentially i want to have two parsers uh p1 and p2 and i want uh basically check them sequentially if the first one fails try the second one and so on and so forth you see what i'm talking about uh yeah so let's actually implement like a, a alternative uh, parser combinator so uh so it's gonna take parsers like this p2 um we pass them and it will it's actually they have to have the same type by the way they have to have the same type otherwise it doesn't work so and it's gonna be like this uh, f sharp is a camel cone yes they actually stole ideas of f sharp um uh, yeah microsoft tried to sue them microsoft tried to sue the creator of the camels but they couldn't do that because Microsoft is a US company and OCaml was developed in France. So um, American company couldn't really sue a France company. It's actually not a company, it's an institution. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how it went down. Mm. So um, now. <clears throat> so how we can try the alternative situations? How can we try an alternative situation? Um, so we're gonna take an input, right? We're gonna take an input, uh, and we're gonna pipe it into the first uh, thing here, right? Like this. And then we're gonna match it and see whether it's successful or not. If it is successful, um, so it's gonna be okay. Input x, and what we wanna return here is just is just that. Um, I wonder. If it matters to do it like that, uh, I'm not sure. <clears throat> mm, error. If it if it's an error, right? If it's an error. Mm, <clears throat> uh, we're gonna run this thing like that. Yeah. So this is essentially uh, what alternative is. This is essentially what alternative is, and it seems to be compiling, which is kind of cool. Um, so now we can test it out. Now we can test it out. Uh, so I'm gonna load everything here, and I'm gonna open this module, uh, and let's see. So the input is gonna be hello, and let's say that we wanna parse either hello or world. Uh, we're gonna remove the rest of them for now. So we expect here either hello or world. All right, so hello was parsed successfully. Uh, what about world? World was parsed successfully. If I try to put something like test here, it is not uh, parsed successfully, it says it expected world. But it says nothing about hello, that's what's interesting about it. It said nothing about hello. Um, because we threw away the error of the left one, that's why. So when you probably some sort of a mechanism that would allow us to log this error somewhere and create like a more error messages or something mm. combine errors yes so this is what i'm thinking uh, thinking about uh we really are living in dystopia uh what is that uh... Mm, starting January 2020 will block all sign-ins to Google account from embedded browser frameworks. What? Embedded browser framework? What is that? Uh, Zero personal subject action requires starting January will block all sign-ins to Google accounts from embedded browser frameworks. What is embedded browser framework? I don't understand it. Uh... Oh. Ah, I see. I see what it is. I know what it is. Uh, Self-based apps. This is actually ba uh, bad. This is actually super bad because the OBS browser is based on that. But I mean, I don't really need to Google to log into Google. But it's actually yeah. But why would they do that? All right, I'm gonna read a little bit uh, closer, like after the stream. Thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can get error messages. Uh, this doesn't sound like a bad idea, actually, Sky Cannon. Uh, so maybe that's exactly what we're gonna do. 
So this is going to be an error. And uh, here we may try to also map the error, uh, the errors, right? Um, mm, in Haskell fails if first parser consumed input. What? Uh, question ignored. Is the parser type the same as you uh, typically do in Haskell? Uh, not really. Well, I mean, I personally do like that in Haskell. But as far as I know, uh, Parsec does it differently. Parsec does it differently. So we can take a look at the Parsec. Sorry that I ignored your question. I just, just didn't notice I <laughs> not ignoring you. Um, so uh, I don't quite understand uh, how Parsec works, to be fair. It's kind of dumb. Uh, use auto Parsec. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Parkum. Parkum is better than both pars uh, Parsec and auto Parsec, in my opinion. Uh, any Parkumers in the chat? Do we have any Parkumers in the chat? Um, so here's, here it is, Parsec. There, there we go. So it's a single function with one, two, three, four, five arguments. And some of the arguments are like three argument functions. Um, yeah. So I don't know why. Uh, plus one for parkour. No, parkoom. So the name of the library that we're developing today is called parkoom. So it's a parser combinators of uh, monad. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now let's continue. So this is auto per sec. So auto per sec is simpler, right? If I understand correctly. Uh, all right, so that's a little bit better. So it also maintains the state and stuff like that. Okay, cool, simpler. I approve. But we're still gonna use parkum. Mm. Uh, so now I'm gonna do that, and after that I need to do result 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 map map result map, and uh, what we're gonna map there, right? What we're gonna actually map error, I think. Uh, map error. Error, 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 error. So is it map? There we go. And yep. Uh, so it's going to be a function. It takes an error. So uh, and if we do have an error, we need to construct a new error. So the position of that error is going to be. Um, so we can call it something like. This is a right error and this is a no 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 this is a left error left error and this is a right error so the position of the new error is going to be uh the position of new error is going to be uh the position of the left one right uh position mm -hmm. and then um the description the description is going to be concatenation of their things. Let's, yeah, maybe. Something like S, a printf, S printf is going to be S or S. The, uh, yeah. So, what do you guys prefer? A, S or S? The choice is yours. Write error text. All right, so this is going to be like this, and that's pretty horrible. Not going to lie, maybe because I forgot the semicolon here. Uh, why are you doing that to me? Like, could you just Emacs is so bebega. Emacs is bebega. Mm, so also, let me take a look. Expect it. So, uh huh, like this. So this is basically what we're going to have here, uh, and. It's actually not text, it's actually a description, right? So, uh, the reason why I'm doing it like that, you're gonna see soon. Uh, let's actually load everything and open like this, and yeah. So, hello. 
seems good. So this is just hello. Then world. This is just world. Now I'm gonna try to do test. Expected hello or expected world. How about that? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Expected hello or expected world. And then we can do something like prefix uh, foo. Expected hello or expected world or expected foo. So this is the description. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So we're gonna leave it for now. Uh, I'm actually thinking of making descriptions a little bit more um, type safe. A little bit more type safe so we can actually generate more pleasant uh, more pleasant error messages. So instead of like description being a string, uh, the description could be something like type desk and it's gonna have like one of them uh, expected, right? Expected of string and uh, you're probably gonna have more of these kind of things and maybe we're gonna have a function that uh, receives like a, takes uh, an array of descriptions, right? Uh, desk list and returns you like a nice description analyzing different types of errors that can happen there and just forms like a sentence that makes sense so this is like a rough idea that I have about error uh, like you know um, error composition and stuff like that so this is actually very interesting because uh, I do want to actually preserve the information about uh, all of the possible options here like I really want to see expected either hello world or foo so this is what I want to see. Um, so um, so far, like this is probably a good choice, but then later we'll have to do something about it. All right. So uh, let's recompile everything. Making good error messages seems hard. Of course, of course it is hard. Uh, that's no. That's why nobody does that. All right. Uh, so implement alternative uh, parser combinator all right so i'm gonna push that right into the repo and i think we need to implement the last one the last important parser before uh we can actually try to apply this library to uh, like to production or something so we already implemented a lot of stuff here so but it's like one handed lines of code I failed once typing to implement parser committees on count because its type system was too big to understand uh, my uh, way to dank types. Ah, I see. That's why I actually keep the whole parser committees simple here, right? So they just have input, uh, error, and uh, the result of the parsing, and that's it. So I'm not trying to make it super flexible or anything. It's just super simple. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, two, 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 two. Now, so I need something like prefix, right? I need something like prefix, something like uh, prefix, but it should take, instead of string, a function from character to boolean. We call such, uh, such functions predicates, right? We call such functions predicates and it should return a string parser. So essentially it basically parses character until this predicate is true and then it stops and returns what it parsed. So it's it's based on the, on the predicate. Um, so that's a good name for a function by the way, but I don't know how to call it yet, I'm sorry. Um, maybe it's something like parse while. Um, yeah, could be uh, parse while. First while, why not? Um, yeah, the variable that gets set when a collision happens XD. This is like a real variable in uh, one of my games. Like it's a real name that, that's there. Um, so yeah. Mm, now, how are we gonna do all of that? So uh, here's the parser, so it accepts an input. And what we're gonna do here is use as fast of a code as possible, right? So because like trying to find a prefix while predicate is true is pretty much an imperative problem. So why not just go ahead and solve it imperatively? So we can have a mutable variable called i 
that contains the index and uh, while um, string get um, input text i this thing is true while this entire thing is true uh, we uh, increment i uh, here's an interesting thing uh, so yeah by the way in a camel you can have a mutable variables so they're called references it it creates like a mutable cell uh, so uh, you can mutate it and uh, there's a special function called incur uh, which takes integer inside of a reference and increments it so you can define something like this is going to be ref zero uh, right so if we take a look at x uh, it doesn't make much sense. You have to actually dereference it like that. So you dereference with like a bang in front of the uh, variable. So if you do incur x, uh, and if you take a look at it, so it, it becomes one. So, yeah. Uh, so as somebody actually mentioned in uh, in the chat, uh, a camel is basically Haskell with cheats. So uh, you can have immutable variables like right away, and you can have while loops. So, yeah. And on top of that, I think we also need uh, to add like additional condition here. Uh, also. P. And i is less than n, where n is the size of the input. So it's going to be a uh, string length input text in. There we go, something like this. You see? You see? So when we keep incrementing this i until the predicate is true, and after we're done, and we do all of that in a while loop without any recursive calls, with, without anything. You just want to do a loop, you just fucking do a loop. Seriously, that's how cool it is. Um, so a camel is basically Python 5, yes. That's basically what it is. Um, so, and as, as I also said, a camel is a language that syntactically pretends to be a functional one, but in reality is just straight up Python. But it's a Python with a static typing and we, uh, that compiles to native code. Can you Python do that? Hmm? Hmm? Can you Python do that? I don't think so. And this shit is way faster than Python, trust me. Um, so, uh, so I, at this point, should point at something that uh, finger so close. I get them. It. I didn't notice that. <clears throat> was it too close? Was it? Yeah, it was too close. I, I wasn't looking at my ABS when I did that. So, um, right. So what we're gonna do here. We'll have to take a substring. Actually, we're gonna do input sub. Uh, input sub. Starting from i. No, we're gonna start from zero. Then uh, this is how much we're gonna take, and we're gonna apply that to the input. Right, but that's only gonna give us the prefix that we're supposed to return. Right, that's only gonna give us the prefix that we're supposed to return. Mm. All right. Uh, maybe because of that, we want to do something like string sub, and we want to apply that to the input text because that's that's the prefix that we're, that we're returning. That's the prefix we are returning. Mm -mm -mm. A camel module SQL pipega type classes, sort of. I mean, you can replace type classes with a camel modules, so they do their job. That's for sure. Uh, what is uh, exclamation mark part? So uh, I is a reference. This is dereferencing the referencing and getting the zero, uh, the value inside of reference. It's not zero because we, we're incrementing it. Yes, I told you it's an imperative language. It's a straight up imperative language. Seriously. Um, but the, yeah, pointers. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, this is what we have here. And I have to also parse the rest of the input. Uh, input sub, um, input sub. It's actually some, something like this. We're starting from this and I need to take n minus this values. n minus this values. And uh, I'll have to provide the input here. So this is gonna be the rest of the input. Mm, and let's see if this compiles. It doesn't compile because 
yeah, I have to do reference it all the time. Now it compiles. So this entire thing compiles. So just essentially, you have a string, right? One, two, three, four, hello. And you have a predicate, something like is digit. So what this code does, it goes from left to right, checking, is this predicate true for that character? Is this predicate true for that one? Is it true for that one? So on and so forth. And it stops when it finds the, pre the character where this predicate is not true and just splits like, like this and wraps all of that into a parser. So, and yeah, I just implemented it in the most imperative way possible. It's just while loop, why not? Uh, Wanna do a while loop? You can do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, we could probably simplify that a little bit, but. Anyways, uh, everything seems to be compiling, and let me see. Do we even have like such predicates? Is there something like char uh, digit um, uppercase? Is there anything there? Well, we, we can implement it ourselves. So ref is just C++ new. Eh, well, C++ new also calls a constructor, I think. Char uppercase. Char uppercase converts to lowercase. I need a predicate. Mm. Uh, I like optional function programming. Just let me do a loop if I want. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, we also need to implement optional. Uh, we need to implement optional uh, that takes a predicate uh, a parser it's, it's not a predicate parser it takes a parser and returns um, a parser that optionally contains uh, this value fail with so essentially we allow that value to be missing right so that's what we do to do uh, optional parser is not implemented Uh, optional parser is not implemented. Um... <laughs> uh... You can define is alpha. I, I can define a lot of things. The question is not whether I can define something, or uh, the question is whether do I already have something that I can use. So that's what uh, the question we have. Okay, let's actually define is digit uh, is digit. Uh, and can I compare characters? So for example, can I do something like uh, one? I can. So and then if I do something like six, so that's actually pretty cool. And uh, you can use match. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, is digits uh, x and um, we're gonna check uh, that this thing less or equal and this is less or equal than 9 right and we can easily check whether something is a digit like this is this a digit ah shit it is a digit is this a digit it is not a digit you see as simple as that now i'm gonna have an input a one two three four hello and then i'm gonna turn it into an input and then i'm gonna have something like parse oh shit i didn't recompile anything god damn it all right so uh load uh open uh one two three four hello uh make input uh parse while and oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy where is my soy there we go uh is digit uh, run there we go so here's the input we're parsing while is digit so what we got here is one, two, three, four, hello. So uh, we can even do like a combinators. So in something like prefix, uh, hello. So we basically split one, two, three, four and hello apart. And I can even add more digits here and it will properly parse them and split them apart. So, and I can combine them as much as I want. So it's pretty cool. Um, so, um, I 
think we're ready to do a committee committee for this thing. And that algorithm, by the way, uh, for, for parse while is extremely fast because I'm pretty sure at the assembly level, it will turn into just a, like a regular loop with just a label and jump to label. It's not going to be like some, you know, fancy uh, trampolines or uh, tail recursion calls with reusing frames and shit like that. No, it's just an imperative fucking code that compiles down to a very efficient assembly. And it's wrapped into functional programming like uh, objects that is combinable with functional programming operations. So if you want to do something fast, you, you can just do something fast. It's, it's cool. Don't worry about it. That's what I like about the camel. At any point, you can just say fuck it and program like in C or whatever. But no use recursion. <laughs> I could probably. I wonder how it optimizes like recursive tail calls. Does it also optimize them down to a, like, you know, like a regular loop? Probably. Disassemble it. Eh, all right. So uh, I think um, God Bolt supports a camel. We can take a look at what it generates when you have a loop like that. Uh, so let me quickly write one. Uh, it's going to be to a reg mod, and uh, so if I do something like i uh, ref zero, and then while i is less one than one hundred, then I'm going to do incur i uh, right, and then I'm going to print. Uh, let's not print anything because it may actually ruin assembly. Uh, and done. So I wonder if it's going to compile down to something. So, uh, Kekamel. Here's the Kekamel. Uh, and uh, actually, it doesn't have that much of a code. Um, all right, let's actually print something because it, I think it optimized everything away and the line. Um, oh, I have an idea. So, we're going to do something like string of int, uh, print, and line. So, let's see how it's going to go. Will that be super efficient? All right. Um, where is the loops? Do you see roots? Uh huh. We can see the start. So let me find the print and line. So here's the print and line. This is where we call it. Yeah. So this is where sequentially we call a string of int and then like this. And then we jump back to 103. Oh, here's the loop. This is literally the whole loop. Right. Seriously. <laughs> oh shit, it uses registers. It literally uses registers for this shit. It doesn't even use memory. Like it's it's just like actually compiled down to a very efficient fucking assembly. Look at that loop. Seriously. Okay, it checks the condition, and then this is out of the condition, and that it adds... Yeah, this is actually very cool. So, and on top of that, you can then wrap it into pure functional code. So... Yeah, but OCaml also has uh, its own bullshit, especially when it comes to infrastructure and stuff like that. You know, remember how many, like, different file types it has? Like, uh, M ML, MLI... Uh, CMO, CMI, CMX, CMXA, CMA. Uh, uh, why does it add two if it increments? That's uh, a good question. I have no idea. Well, is it really a value? Yes, it is a value. Now write a tail recursive version for comparison. I'm too lazy, I'm sorry. But yeah. It's kind of is it really two or is it referring to some address or something? Mm, okay. Alright, let's continue. Um so implement um uh, Yeah, it's doing something weird, but yeah. Uh, parkum. Maybe it's got bolded that is doing something weird. Who knows? Uh, parkum ML. So we need to implement an optional, by the way. We need to implement an optional. So basically, if the parser, the underlying parser fails, it shouldn't fail. It should just return an optional thing. 
Um, yeah. So uh, this is how we're gonna do that. Uh, run fun input. So and match p1 run input with. So if it's successful, right? If it's successful, uh, I think we can just return return the result then. Right. If it's not successful, did you implement attempt? What is attempt? I have no idea what the fuck is attempt. I'm sorry. Uh, so this is an error. We can just ignore that error. Uh, we can just ignore that error. And we can return OK. But we're going to use the rest of the input as this. And we're going to return just none. Oh, OK, so we have to actually be a little bit careful. So this is the rest of the input. So, and this is the value. So we'll have to wrap it like this, uh, some x. So this has to be like this. Mm, cool. So this is an option one. Mm. Uh, this is just an optional type. So essentially if it fails, it's not gonna really fail the whole parsing. It's gonna just return you none. And you can uh, you know handle that if you want to, and it doesn't even compile because it's just p. All right, if one parser in the chain uh, files, then proceed to the next parser. Ah, no, I don't know how to implement that. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so um, load. So let's take a look. Uh, and let's actually implement uh, the following parser combinator. So we're going to have a prefix, uh, hello, and uh, we're going to combine it uh, sequentially with uh, prefix world. Right, but uh, here we're going to make an alteration. So prefix hello is going to be optional. So this is an optional prefix. So here is our parser. So this entire expression is a parser. So and this is parser combinators are all about. You create like small parsers and you just combine them together. So let's create hello world. Right. Hello world. Uh, and of course we want to pipe it into the make and we're going to pipe it into our parser combinator. And what we get, we have some hello world. And now if I remove hello from here, it will return as known world. As you can see, hello became optional. And you can even uh, detect that. You can even have this as a known or as a sum, um, so, which is quite convenient. So this is yet another important parser, combinator, that will be useful in our library. So yeah, I would say our library is pretty much like feature complete. I don't really know if we need anything else here, to be fair. Oh, I know what we need here. I fucking know what we need here. Uh, we need menu. Uh, we need menu. So essentially, you have p, a parser, and it's what this parser does, uh, what this parser committed does, it applies that parser as long as it can uh, and collects the results into a list. So that's essentially what it does. So the result of this one is going to be list of, uh, of these values that the original parser, uh, you know, uh, the original parser parses. Um, <clears throat> well, but as far as I know, Church was the supervisor of Turing, wasn't it? Wasn't he? I mean, <sighs> all right. So, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by making a small break, because I need to pee. Uh, right, small break. Uh, it's going to be, I suppose, two minutes, maybe. Uh, mm -mm. Alright, boys and girls, let's make a small break, and you guys have fun. Oh, shit, yeah. All right, that's interesting. Okay, uh, f have fun.
That was Poggers. Hello. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> uh, so, we need to implement menu. Right. We need to implement menu. Uh, so, how can we implement that? But essentially, we need to apply this parser to the input as long as we can. Right. As long as we can. That's pretty simple. Uh, so, here's the input. Um, and again, I'm probably going to use... Um, Probably gonna use like a very imperative code. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we wanna have like oh my god, RT one three three seven. Thank you so much for eight months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back to our Kick Comrade Club. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So we're gonna accumulate uh, the result uh, of the parser application to uh, our special cell, and it's gonna be a list. We're gonna just append those things to the list as we as we go. Um, and <clears throat> this one is interesting. So um, I don't know. Maybe this one would be easier with. Um, With tail recursion, uh, I think it would be a little bit easier with the tail recursion because I can just do something like a rec loop and I'm gonna accept the input here. Uh, complete <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, wait a second. Fail with to do. All right. So, and we're gonna do loop on the input. Cool. Uh, so, what this thing can return is maybe the rest of the input. That could be it. All right, and what we do here, we do uh, p uh, run on that input prime. Let's actually not call it input prime because then we're gonna get another input prime. Uh, right, so we're gonna match it with um, tail recursion. Yeah, so sometimes it's just a little bit more convenient to do things still recursively. Sometimes it's more convenient to do imperatively and you can just switch between the styles. So you can even use object oriented style here, but I never used it. I don't think it's that great here. But anyway, so we can have a keg. Here's the input prime and we also get got a value. Uh, so what we have to uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to push that value into the result. Right. So here's the very interesting syntax. I'm going to explain it a little bit later, but yeah. So as I already mentioned, uh, bang uh, dereferences the reference. But if you want to uh, replace a value inside of a reference, you have to use this kind of assignment operator, right? So basically on the left side, this operator expects a reference. And what it does, it replaces the value inside of the reference with this value. So this is how you can append uh, a new value to a list, to like an immutable variable. All right, in the case of an error, I suppose we have to ignore that error, which is not particularly great, but anyway. Uh, and we have to return the uh, the rest of the input like this. And uh, here we have to return the input. So loop itself, when it's done uh, looping around, um, when it's done looping around, will return the rest of the input. That's what it will do. So, uh, yep. Right. And the result is going to be contained somewhere here. So essentially, um, essentially, we'll have to return input prime and then result like this. So there we go. We implemented a many parser combinator, so which basically applies the parser uh, as long as it can until it encounters an error. And then it returns the list of what it managed to parse. Right. So uh, let's try to test all of that. Let's see if it compiles. It in fact compiles and uh, let's rerun all of this stuff and let's reload everything. Uh, and uh, also open this parkoom thingy. So what I'm thinking about, boys and girls, what I'm thinking about, uh, let's create a parser combinator that parses a list of uh, digits, right? Mm. Do you have repeat operator? No, I don't know how to implement it, I'm sorry. So uh, let's uh, implement like digits uh, and it's going to be basically parse while is digit and again I don't have this digit apparently yeah yeah so I have to implement it yet again uh, is digit 
there we go. So, luckily, you top uh, like stores um, um, the previous history, which is quite convenient. So, uh, then I'm gonna implement digits. And there you go, we have a parser committer that parses digits. So, essentially, if I do something like this, uh, I, and I can make an input out of it, and uh, and then I can just do digits run uh, and uh, index out of bounds. Oh shit! Index out of bounds. I think I did a fucky wacky straight up. Oh, I know what is going on. I know what is going on. So it's not going to be a fucky wacky if I have something here. Yeah. So basically, it doesn't calculate this stuff correctly, unfortunately. Yeah, I see. Mm, so this is a bug that we'll need to fix. But anyway, I can just do it like that. Uh, no, we will have to fix it, actually. Um, so let's go fix it. So the problem is that when you have an input that is fully consumed by parse while, it hits the end, uh, end of the string uh, and uh, throws an exception because it's not a valid like index or whatnot. So we need to do something about that. So let's go to parse while and uh, try to fix that. So what's going on? So essentially, in that case, i is going to be equal to n, right? In that case, i is going to be equal to n. Um, and what we're doing... That, that one is very interesting. So if you have a string, one, two, three, four, five, and you string sub, uh, and it's going to be equal five, right? So here, this is going to be equal to five, and I'm going to do zero. It, it produces a correct value. So wait a second, it does produce a correct value, which is kind of interesting. Can it do, yeah, goes a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So why would it fail like that? So maybe it fails... Oh, so what if I swap them around? So if this is going to be 5, it still works. So if it consumes all of them, it shouldn't be a problem. Wilkins. Hello, comrades. Thank you. Thank you so much for 9 months of a Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Kcomrade Club. So yeah, money rate, yes. But it didn't work as expected, yeah, I know that. So that's why I'm trying to find the problem here. Hmm, mm. I know what's going on. I think none of these things will uh, throw an error. I think the error is thrown by this expression, and you know why? This is why. Got Kuder, by the way. <clears throat> uh, no, it's not Pepego Camel, it's a Pepego Soding. So. Um, Alright. Uh, so let's give it a try uh, and see if it's gonna work now. So we're gonna make an input and we're gonna do parse. Again, uh, I need to do is digits. Yeah, there we go. Uh huh. Parse while is digit, and I have to actually run it. Okay, it managed to parse the number. Everything's okay. So, but if I remove a, it still parses a number. Okay, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Cool, cool, cool. So we can fix the bug. Um, oh, I didn't even commit a parse parse while. So that means I actually I can actually sneak my fix uh, here. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the points. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm preparing the points. God damn it! I got you budget yet again. All right. Uh, so, uh, what I want to do here, what the hell is going on? Uh -huh. So, implement, uh, and I need to append a null character, yes. Uh, implement parse while combi combinator. I'm going to push that right into the repo. 
Okay. Uh, so what I wanted to test, yeah, so let's actually come up with a very interesting parser combinator. So we're going to have digits, uh, digits, uh, di digits, where is definition? Yeah, there we go. Here's the definition of digits. It's, a, it's basically parse while is digit. Makes sense. So um, now let's implement something like numbers. And what's it, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? So first we have digits, right? Then uh, we combine sequentially with many uh, spaces digits. There we go. Here's a very interesting thing. Uh, so uh, first uh, we have some sort of a number and then many other digits separated by the space. And that should return us the uh, list of numbers. So furthermore, um, this entire thing may, it, it returns actually a, a pair. Um, I, I can't even show you what exactly it returns. So it has a type of string, uh, of a pair, string and string list. So it returns a head and a tail. So what you'll have to do here is probably, um, uh, it's probably connect them together somehow. So you can have some like something like X and X's and essentially you can just do uh, like this. And uh, then you just have like a list of these strings. And furthermore, you can do something cool and map all of that. So we can take all of these values and map them, list map uh, to int of uh, string like this and you will get like an parser that uh, like returns you numbers so essentially you, if you have something like one to three uh one to three and you pipe it into like make input oh wait a second yeah oh, okay so it's not gonna work properly uh but if you pipe it into numbers uh, run you get a list of numbers but they are reversed order because i'm bebega but it tried it it actually tried uh, to do that so uh so the thing we need to do when we parse a menu we have to actually reverse the result so the the result has to be reversed so let's actually try that one more time uh yeah so it's going to be load open uh is digits uh can i do something like uh let is digits there we go then we define let digits there we go then i define numbers let numbers here they are and uh now i can try to do something like this yeah there we go so this should work now properly there we go so we had a string one two three four five and we turn it into an actual string from one two three four five and we did that uh with this combination of uh, parsers, right? We did that with this combination of parsers. And that's exactly what, we, what we're trying, we were trying to achieve, right? So first you have digits, then you have many of, um, many of these sequences, basically space and other digits, and then we transform all of them. We just combine everything and we turn everything into integers. So this is already actually uh, functioning uh, function in uh, parser community library that you can probably use in production to parse things. Um, so um, let's see what we can do about it. Functional library. <laughs> Very funny. So let's do different committees. Um, so here's the first thing. Implement optional parser combinator uh, what if more than one space between that means it will fail implement menu parser com, uh, combinator let's push that right into the repo okay so uh yeah the library is pretty much production ready believe it or not like it took 137 lines of code and this is an actually useful parser combinator library. Like seriously, like it has everything. You don't really need that much. Uh, 
we don't really need that much. It's a super simple one. And now let's try to implement like a new parser uh, using this library. This is this is exactly what we started with. How can we implement an new parser? Um, to 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 uh, in new parser. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, a new parser is supposed to return uh, a list of section, a list of sections, uh, and it only took two hours. Yeah, so I think people overcomplicate parser community libraries. You don't really need much. You just need, you know, recursive descent functions, and you just need a way to glue them together, and that's it. So um, yeah. So I think we're gonna start with. Oh, yeah. This stuff is complicated. Looks good. Parse communities and rest. Uh, I don't know. Maybe your parse communities are more flexible. Uh, are you going to implement set by like the one from the JSON video? We can try to do that. Uh, sure. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it does. So it accepts a, a separator and uh, the parsers and just, yeah, we can try to do something like that. But I'm not sure if it's going to be particularly useful for our case. Mm, sure, it's going to be particularly useful for our case. Ini. Is Ini that useful? To parse. Mm -hmm. mm. So, what's funny? Ini is kind of like a line based, so I'm not sure if parsing something like that in Ini is easy. Well, we can try. So we can try to implement like a very, like very simple things. Um, um, I'm going to do it like this. So we have sections and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to keep it read the whole file. I'm going to temporarily remove this thing. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so um, section, section name, right? A section name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is expected to be um, a, a parser that returns a string parkum uh, parser so how can we implement such parsers so essentially um, I'm gonna do let open parkum uh, parkum in so basically it imports everything from that module into the scope of this function but not uh, in the scope uh, to the scope uh, of uh, outside function um, so and uh, so we expect a prefix of this thing and then we don't want this prefix at all this prefix is not part of the name so that means we're gonna ignore it and then we do parse while this thing is not equal to this thing and then prefix this thing so there we go we have a parser community that parses um <clears throat> that parses this uh, particular title so we can try to build it and see uh how it works any parkumers in the chat yeah it's me I'm a parkumer uh, okay, you top, and also we need to include examples. So we're gonna include everything, and I'm gonna load uh, not only parkum. I want to load recursively. Uh, any, yeah, any CMO, and everything is, uh, seems to be loaded correctly. And in any, what we have, uh, we have section name, right? So we have a section name. And if we take a look at it, it's it's a parser that returns a string. So what do we have here? We can have hello. Uh, we're gonna have hello, <clears throat> um, and I also want to open parkum. Right. We're gonna have hello. We're gonna turn it into an input, and then it's gonna be any section section name. So here's the section name. We run this thing, 
And uh, yeah, it managed to parse it. So the input was that and it turned it into hello. Everything looks okay. So if I add some like world, it, it still works. So it actually extracts this thing out of this, you know, out of this brackets. So we have a section, section name. Now uh, we probably want to uh, have like something like pair. We ha already have a pair, uh, let's call it pair parser. So a pair parser will return you literally a pair. Uh, parkum, uh, parkum parser. All right, so how is it gonna be? So essentially, we're gonna make an assumption that um, the keys, the keys are alphanumeric, right? They're gonna be alphanumeric. <sighs> so, and also they can start with uh, white spaces, right? So we probably wanna implement something like uh, white spaces, right? Or white spaces, something like this. So it's a parser that uh, removes all of the white spaces. So how does it do it? Uh, well, it just parses wh uh, while it is a white space, right? Parse while um, is space, and I'm not even sure if we have something like that. Space, no. Nah, we don't have anything like that. But we can do something like uh, fun x equal to space. So this entire thing will parse while white spaces. So, okay, uh, the pair can start with this. We want to ignore it. Uh, and of course, we're gonna do it like that. So then we're gonna have like a pair and name, I suppose. Um, um, maybe key parser. Uh, we wanna preserve it though. We do wanna preserve it. Uh, but then you can have white spaces here, right? You can have white spaces here. Uh, then you may have uh, prefix equal, you may have prefix equal. Uh, then you may have white spaces. Mm -hmm. And then you may have like a value parser, but I'm don't, not sure how to combine this. So it's, it's probably gonna be something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have an idea. So uh, I will probably have to do it like this. Right, so it's gonna be like that. Right, so this is the first part, and then we'll have to combine it like this, and this is gonna be the second part. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we have white spaces, key, uh, key, then more white spaces, then prefix, and as you can see, they all point towards the key part, so that means any of these values are gonna be thrown away. Then we sequentially combine it with this, where any spaces are gonna be thrown away, um, and with the value power, we might as well, actually. Uh, maybe put white spaces here to get rid of them from here, right? Chat, why are you dead? Why did you become dead all of a sudden? Is everything okay? Uh, we're just trying to, to make a simple parser. We're not... yeah. What's up, Domson? Welcome to the stream. And I wonder how well that will work. Um, so uh, let's have a key parser uh, and let's say that um, it's anything that is not a space, right? So let's say that it's a parse while um, x not a space and nod and equals. Uh, then we can have value parser, the same one actually. Hmm, we might as well have something like name then, and this is going to be this, uh, name, this is another name, and that will result in uh, just two pairs, uh, it will just result in two pairs, uh-huh, uh-huh, 
how I'm programmed, what? I don't understand. Is it a question to me? I don't understand, sorry. Uh, pair is just that. Okay, so that should work. Uh, did you bypass check by using slash me? Apparently, apparently it works. Interesting. Mm. Hacked. Actual hacker. Would you look at that? Mm. So this is going to be the payer parser. This is going to be the payer parser. So maybe I want to make a cup of tea before we, we check all of that. Uh, let me make a cup of tea. Mm. Maybe I'm going to test it first. If it's an all prepends uh, zero. Oh. Will you fix it? Maybe. Uh, I mean, at any point, I can just ban people who abuse that. Uh... Okay. I'm going to sneeze. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, load requires to be this thing, and then we're gonna open parkum. Uh, any uh, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for pair parser. Um, and what we're gonna have here is a hello equal world, and we can also put like arbitrary amount of spaces here. Uh, we can turn that into an input, uh, make input, we can turn that into an input. <clears throat> And uh, we're going to run a pair parser in it. And we got a pair hello world. So this was the input. Uh, it's going to review if you never use them. I do actually. I do read them. I just have so many of them uh, that I cannot respond to all of them. But yeah, I managed to, par to parse the pair. And I can try to remove something, introduce like syntactical error. And it will say expected equals at position 10. Like seriously, that of the cells. If you remove equals, expected this at position ten, and uh, yeah, it, then it works. Um, so yeah, now we are capable of parsing pairs and shit like that, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, the problem is that we also have can have like empty lines and it's not particularly great. So I don't know how we can handle empty lines here. This parser is expecting too much. No, it, it expects uh, like actually exactly enough. So we can try to do the one without new lines. Uh, this one is not particularly easy to parse with parser commanders, but we can try it. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, maybe we can try to do a section parser. Uh, section parser, and it will return a section. It will return a section. Mm. Oh, this one is going to be actually very interesting. So I think we can we can do something about that. Parkum pass. Uh, essentially, a section is a section name, section name, and many pairs. That's what they are. It's just a section name and many pairs. How about that? That's pretty straightforward. Uh, and uh, after that, what we can do, we can just map all of that. So it's a parkum. We can actually do some open parkum in. Uh, just map. And here we're going to have uh, name and pairs. And I can just turn it into the section because section is a special time, the type. So it's going to be a name and then list of pairs. Mm -hmm. mm, cool. And that's it actually. So now we know how to parse a single section. And we can say that the ini file, let ini, okay, I already removed it. So ini parser, 
any parser section list or com parser is essentially just many sections just many sections all right so there we go so this is how we just combine all of them together making more and more powerful parsers and uh, yep and uh, that didn't work for some reason uh unbound name constructor let's call it s then uh s and this one is going to be ps this one is going to be ps oh yeah I'm, I'm sorry it has to be equal yeah yeah yeah. it has to be equal uh why any at not tomal i don't know so somebody suggested at the beginning of the stream to use any and now we're sticking with any so sorry <laughs> if somebody suggested tomal at the beginning of the stream we could parse tomal but this is just an example just to see how we can apply this you know library um yeah by the way i want to do a following thing uh i think we don't need show because we're going to do that in a ripple anyway right so and i want to replace some of this thing with like underscore t underscore t underscore pair the section and the reason why i want to have like underscore t there is because i want to uh, have like a proper names for these things like section name white space payer a section in e. you see so uh so now it's it looks like a grammar of some sort here and we we, we do use open parkum like everywhere maybe it makes sense to just open parkum like at the top so we don't waste much time and uh yeah so just remove all of that shit here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, looks cool. Looks cool. So is it gonna compile? Uh, yeah, it has to be underscore t underscore value. Um, so player underscore t, sure. Uh, underscore t. Uh-huh. Uh, notice how it fails at the first error. It doesn't try to continue uh, like compiling if it encountered an error. It just first shows you the first relevant error, which is so beautiful. Like I think uh, compilers, all compilers should do that. Uh, right, section. There we go. So any is just many section. Section is a section name and many pairs. Um, pair is just a name and uh, a name separated by equals with white spaces between them um right and name is just something that is not space or equals and white spaces is just something that is white space and section name is that and yeah this is the whole grammar pretty much um so let's actually test how all of that works so i have a test file somewhere there so we don't handle like empty lines and whatnot uh, right we don't handle empty lines so uh let's uh reopen this thing and i'm gonna load this stuff like this and then open actually i need to do i need to open parkum yeah i need to open parkum uh, so we're gonna have here we'll need to read a whole file we're gonna read examples uh, examples uh test in ye. And we're gonna try to read the whole file. Okay, we managed to read the whole file. Then we're gonna turn it into the input, making this an input. Okay, this is the whole input. And I'm gonna do ini, ini run. And I managed to parse the ini file. Wait. That is very pepega, by the way. But yeah. So I guess white spaces should also include new, uh, new lines. Mm hmm. Okay, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, equal or x equal uh, new. All right. <clears throat> so let's just try to reload that. Then open, uh, yeah. So, and let's go back in the history and... It still didn't work for some reason. Uh, Anki Doodle is gifting one tier sub to Tony Commute. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, and Virax, welcome to our epic. Uh, what are we? What are we today? Parsi Commuters Club. That's right. So this one is interesting. So maybe we should do that slightly differently. Maybe. Hmm. 
So it would be a little bit easier if we could split that by lines and actually use parser committers for lines, but I don't think we can do it right now. So I think we could ex expand our parser commit and library to uh, have customizable inputs, or input could, uh, inputs could be not necessarily strings, but sequences of any things, right? So. I think you don't. You need a double says at the end of the value, probably. Um, let's do that. Double uh, says at the end of the value. Uh, all right. So that sounds like a good idea. So that should actually work. Mm, load, open, and let's go back. And it didn't work. What the fuck? Hmm. Ah, all right. So you know what we can do? We can introduce uh, is space. So this is going to be just that. Uh, and then we're going to put this thing here. So this is is space and uh, WSS is that is space. Then next uh, time. Uh, is space not like this uh -huh. oh i think because this is used as dereferencing you have to use not here yeah i remember that uh yeah yeah so that should work now hopefully i don't know we'll see so uh yep and would you look at that isn't that epic isn't that epic i think it's pretty epic I think it's pretty goddamn epic. So, and uh, we parsed this thing. I think it will also support empty lines if you think about. Yeah, it will. If you if you think about that, it will support. Yeah, it also support empty lines. So that's super cool. Huh. Uh, yep. But this is not the best way of parsing these kind of things. I would say. But, eh, sort of an okay-ish way of doing that. <clears throat> Accidental feature, yeah. So a better way of parsing that would be first splitting that into uh, lines and parsing them line by lines. Uh, parsing them line by lines. Hmm. Yeah, and tokens, ah, eh, might be tokens. I think tokens would be overkill for this situation. I think lines would be okay. Uh, but that will require a customizable input. That will require a customizable input. Uh... Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do a committee committee for what we already have here. Um... I'm not really sure if I want to go into the comments uh, right now at least. Implement a simple ini parser using the library. All right, let's push that right into the repo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Mm. So how a comment would look like, by the way, how a comment would look like. Let's actually think about it. Maybe we can introduce comments. Uh, comment. It's actually very interesting. So string parkum uh, parkum pasa. And uh, so what's that? So the first thing, it starts with a prefix uh, dot. Right. And we want to ignore it. So that's why we're combining it like that. So then uh, we parse while, parse while, the x is not uh, end of the end of the file. Right. So that's the comments. Mm, did I do? Did I do void? Mm, God damn it! 
Um, and where can we put the comments? That's a very interesting question. Mm, because we first start with the section. Section may, may start with a comment. Uh -huh. Yeah. You start parsing section and uh, it just doesn't work. If you wrap a uh, comment in optional. Oh yeah, you also have to wrap it in optional, of course. Uh... Mm. If your wrap comment is optional, you can put it as uh, or pair, and at the end of the pair as well. Um, all right. But the problem is that comment will return a string. They have different types. They have to have the same types for it to be like that. Maybe... Nah, I don't want to go with that. It's it's actually kind of complicated. Uh, uh, my brain doesn't work anymore. So I think parser committers are just not the right way of parsing this kind of thing. But I just used like ini as an example anyway. So uh, maybe I want to also provide some examples to test this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we already have this input. Um, hello, uh, Father Staffel. Welcome to the stream. Um, all right. So we need to have like input. Uh, so the input is going to be how do you access command line arguments in uh, in a camel? Uh, command line arguments. Let's find out. Jason has no comments. Yeah. Mm, RGB. Okay, so it's sys uh, RGB. All right, since RGB. Uh, there we go. Looks good. Um, so what we'll have to do, we'll have to match uh, sys rgv with and uh, then we're gonna have a program name that we're gonna ignore and uh, file name, right, uh, file with to do. Uh, Alright, and if it's something else we have to actually fail saying that Expected uh, file path to an expected path to an any file. That's what we expect here. Uh, so now I'm going to take a file name. I called it file path though, so let's call it like that. Um, read whole file. Make an input out of it. Make an input out of it. And then. Um, in new run, right? We do a new run, and this thing returns the result, right? You get the result, and we'll have to parse it appropriately because it could be a failure. So, if it's an OK, uh, here is um, sections. So, we got sections, uh, and in case of an error, um, we have to print an appropriate error. Uh, so let's print something like this, uh, printf, error during parsing at position D, S, uh, god damn it, uh, so error description, there we go. Okay, so, and we need to print the sections yet again, so I'm getting back to what I had before. Uh, so, there's no way to just print that thing in a camel. There's no way to just print a type or, or make the type showable, So, which which makes it kind of sad, but it is what it is. Uh, by the way, Sodium, I know it's a bit of topic, but I think you could optimize the parser by removing prefix from the section and replace it with something like any. Maybe. Uh, like any single character? Is that what you mean? Any single character? Or I, I'm not really sure how it's okay. Any single character. 
Ah, I see what you mean. Ah, because yeah, because I compare with a single thing here like twice. Uh, maybe it's an interesting idea. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's kind of funny. Uh, and how would you implement like any single character? Let's actually think about it. Any. Um, Mm. Uh, SRC Parkum Any uh, Any char Let's actually call it like that And it's a parser that returns you a single character That's that's literally what it does um, So And Here's the sync, Interesting thing uh, If The length Of the input uh, is equal to zero. This is straight up failure. This is straight up failure. So it's going to be error. Uh, position at position of the input and the description. Uh, description. Expected. Expected any char character. Hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, otherwise, uh, we should return that character, right? So, and how are we gonna do that? Uh, might as well actually save that thing, so n is gonna be this. What are you doing? I'm developing this thing. Uh, Alright. Mm -hmm. So, and... Uh, the output is going to be string get zero input text uh, and the rest of the input is going to be sub one n minus one n minus one input i think something like this this is how any char would look like um yeah but you still do a comparison, so uh, the point would be to get rid of the additional comparison with this bracket in the prefix, but you still do a comparison uh, w by checking whether the string is empty or not. You still do that. But at the same time, maybe we shouldn't try to do that, because um, essentially what we can do, we can just try to return that, and uh, if the string is empty, that will uh, that will uh, throw an exception, and we can just call that exception, uh, catch this exception here. So, <laughs> in the wallet argument. So, and what's funny, this is genuinely could be faster. This is genuinely could be faster because if it doesn't fail, it's never gonna even do any like unwinding or anything it's straight up just returning that so that could be faster but i mean you always need to check this kind of stuff whether it's actually faster or just or we just imagine that but yeah so <laughs> uh so that's 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 funny i see okay thank you thank you for suggesting that all right so this one is not a fun it's a run no fun is allowed here uh and oh yeah and yeah and it's going to be string length uh, input text text uh -huh. and uh, yeah we have to swap it around uh-huh all right so now it complains about that that's that's a very interesting parser okay thank you well we'll test it out uh, I'll test it out. But now I need to print the output, uh, the, the the result, and there's no really good way for me to do that. So I can show uh, sections <clears throat> and whatnot. I'll have to implement all of that shit yet again. So just give me a second. Sections, it's a single section of list, and it will return a string. And uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just taking sections and mapping it with show a single section. Then I'm concatenating that string concat with these things, right? And then print f sprint f uh -huh. s, and that's 
it deriving show yeah but you, you can do that in a camel without additional third party dependencies um unfortunately so i have to do that myself <laughs> ah, i wish i could just do derive show but yeah uh printf s uh printf s printf so uh name is equal s pairs equal s oh sorry uh as you as can you see i'm not a haskick developer uh, uh oh i see what you mean section name and then show pairs section pairs all right so we're gonna actually do it like that hopefully it's gonna work out uh show pairs Paris show Paris um pair list I think I need T I really need T but I want to finish this pairs <clears throat> uh, list map show a pair we're almost there by the way uh string concat this print f sprint f uh -huh. shit single pair i think it could be something like key and value You think I don't know that? Um... Alright. Uh, this pattern match uh, matches the value of least. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it has to be like this. Uh huh. Uh. Ah, okay. Um, can I do array to list? Okay, okay, it, it worked. And it also complains that there's like it's not uh, expected. This match is unused. What do you want from me? Um. All right, whatever. I I don't know what it wants from me. To be fair, like um so i check whether it has this shape and if it doesn't um i just don't care like but uh, um this match case is unused okay oh maybe it has something to do with this uh is that what you want uh -huh. Yeah, okay, it wanted this oh, cam woman, right? Oh my god. Okay, cool. Uh, so, and when we have sections, right, we're gonna do sections, show sections, and we're just gonna print and line them. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Camel. I should also implement my own, like, show library uh, that serializes the type and whatnot, uh, the types and whatnot. So, uh, in E, uh, byte, so expected path uh, to an input file so the, then we can do something like example any uh, test any and there we go we got what we expected there we go so i had to implement this kind of stuff myself actually which is fucking ridiculous but <laughs> yeah so i got it actually got it cool so now i should be able to add that to the uh, to the quick start um Thank you, thank you so much. Quick start. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be make, then uh, ini uh, native examples, examples, is it examples? Uh, test ini. So, this is basically why I was trying to do all of that because I want something uh, that people can reproduce on their machines. 
and it does work. Okay, now, um, um, uh, okay, document reproducible example. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. And let's take a look at this any char. Will that break uh, the parsing? So uh, if we take a look at the any ML and uh, sections and whatnot, so we can say any single char, right? So any single char. And uh, if we rebuild it and if we run it, it doesn't break the parsing. So yeah. And it, potential, it is potentially faster, but it's kind of difficult to uh, verify that, whether it's actually faster, right? But theoretically, it could be, because it, like, it doesn't compare anything, it just takes the substring, and that's it, right? So, yeah. So, and uh, I'm gonna commit this any char parser. Implement any char parser. We're going to push that right into the repo. So yeah, you can find the source code of the thing that we developed today here in the chat. Uh, I actually developed it for myself because I need it for one of my for one of my projects, and it's going quite well so far. So uh, yeah, it's a parser combinator, and the library the size of the library is actually very small. Uh, One hundred and forty seven lines of code. Right, parser committer uh, library with monadic operations, co uh, combiners and stuff like that, and it's quite cool. So that was actually a pretty interesting stream. But unfortunately, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you, guess when. Guess when I'm gonna see you all? I'm gonna see you all uh, tomorrow, because tomorrow, according to the schedule, we are doing a game development. How about... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Anonymous user is gifting 10 tier 1 subs to the Sojin community. Thank you so much for supporting the community. I really appreciate that. And Dexter36, Knoet for 20 Palm Tree ho uh, Holidays, Mig the Others, Mutual uh, Mutually Assured Seduction, Jerry D. Cherry, Max v Velua, Drakek Zorn, Simply for Lulz, uh, Nickel Comte, welcome to our epic uh, Parsa Combinators Club. Welcome, 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 and thank you so much for such a generous support. All right, I'm going to see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is a game development stream. Uh, check out the schedule for more information for more information on different projects we're working on. Uh, also, check out our VODs channel, where we archive the recordings of our stream. This re uh, stream is going to be there as well, but tomorrow, on the next day. We usually upload them on the next day. And also check out our Discord server, yes, for offline discussion with the community. So that's it for today, boys and girls. That's it. Love you all. Mwah.